Okay, so I'm here with Brittany Anderson. It is April 29th, 2019. Uh, Brittany Anderson is my therapist, and we are doing an interview based on gang stalking, what I've shown her, and um, what she has seen, acknowledged. Uh, Brittany Henderson is a therapist, um, license number 10401, is that correct? 104401. 104401. Um, and uh, Brittany, can you briefly describe your background for the viewers? Uh, just you know what you do. Okay. Um, uh, I'm what you're what you're qualified in. Sure. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, I graduated from Pepperdine in 2015, and I've worked treatment centers, hospitals, all over the place. And now I work in private practice. So, work with several people <laughs> in different settings. And psychotherapy, right? Oh yeah, psychotherapy. Yeah, psychotherapy. yeah marriage and family therapist. Okay. So. Psychotherapy. So I've been seeing Brittany, I might have just mentioned, for five months, and she has seen a lot of data showing mass groups, mobbing, trying to create mental illness and make me look like a violent, paranoid schizo um, in mass coordinated groups, also known as a conspiracy, two or more people to get together to hurt harm me or do something negative or in a bad way to someone uh, gang stalking would be the same thing as gaslighting, except gas gaslighting would be singular, as gang stalking would be plural. Mass groups um, supposedly derived from KKK and Adolf Hitler's regime of a next next type of warfare tactic. Um, it is used by mass hate groups. Uh, it is very rare. It is used by mass coordinated hate groups, um, obviously the KKK, but also, ironically, the police use these tactics in the United States of America, as well as other countries contacting security companies to follow people around unconstitutionally and illegally and go after those people they don't like, trust, don't feel comfortable around, or things that have nothing to do with the Constitution of the United States and anyone and, and violates everyone's protections and freedoms. Uh, while very few are actually targeted, it does happen and it's extremely rare. Uh, Brittany Henderson has seen a lot of the footage and uh, simply walking outside in front of her office out in Thousand Oaks, which I'm, I live in Woodland Hill, so all the way out this way, uh, insane amounts of numbers showing that it's worldwide and directed at me and she has witnessed that. Now I have some questions I wanted to go through um, for uh, Brittany um, to talk to you guys or talk about what she's witnessed on video and outside this office. Remember this is going on all day and night 24-7 worldwide directed at me um, but in the last five months I have uh, shoveled huge amounts of data towards Brittany, which doesn't come close to 0.000000001% of what's really going on. But just seeing a few of these videos, um, she was kind of like, you're like, um, oh my god, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, just totally. About, sure. Yeah, okay. So, um, can I just say Oh, yeah. Quickly? Yeah, and anytime you feel like you want to jump in, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, just that. You've given consent that it's okay that I speak about our sessions. What's happening? Yeah, well, we're we're not talking about psycho psychoanalysis, like but but the, I'm giving consent for um, as far as the video I've showed her and what she's witnessed, and that I am a therapist, that, and, <laughs> and she is okay my therapist. Purpose. We're okay. not we're not violating any type of no, or, no the, or we're not talking about analysis is here based on uh, is Kevin crazy? Is Kevin not crazy? That's not no, what we're doing the here. Facts. But yeah, yeah but but Absolutely. the situation of gang stalking and yeah, yeah. Absolutely. okay, so no mental anything, like yeah, what's mental evaluation? None yeah, of yeah. Stuff. It's no, just this is the not a mental evaluation. It's just two people talking about what they've seen. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> okay, but yeah, just you give me consent. So I just correct and, and for this. Brittany has consent to talk about these things Absolutely. with me. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> 
Go ahead. And Sorry. you give me consent, right? Too? Oh, totally. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's yours. <laughs> to show this. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, okay. So let's let's start. Um, okay. So I, I obviously, like I just said, I showed Brittany proof of these mass operations with the police, security companies on video, photos. Uh, just off the top of my head, um, I'm going to talk about some of the things I've showed shown her, which is a lot. I can't remember it all. Um, and if you would like to kind of jump in and say, oh yeah, well, what about this? That's fine too. Okay. Um, um, the video of the car patterns at the park by my house, uh, video footage of literally something like 15 pairs of twos, identical cars, like two gray Accords, two white Jeep Cherokees, uh, three, who knows, black pickups, all together, one behind the next, uh, circling this park in insane amounts of numbers. Um, you saw that, right? I did. I uh, saw what did you there think? There were double white trucks. I saw the patterns you're talking about, absolutely. Of the yeah. Cars, the cars I mean, what did you think as far as, like, statistically, how can this be? Well, I'm not a mathematician or well, whatever, no, but, but it was a lot of... But way past the, the norm. Like, once in a blue moon, you might see mm -hmm. two white civics together. But Correct. to circle a small park, uh, what do you think? A hundred yard patch of grass? It's large, and there's definite, there were It's about 50 yards. It's not even... Yeah, it's... I don't 50 know how circling a 50 yard patch of grass, let's say 15 pairs mm -hmm. of cars in twos and threes, identical cars, mm -hmm. and not even things. spread one behind the back, right? I mean, yeah. from a psychological or statistical analysis about if, if that's coincidence possible, coincidence, not, can that happen randomly by itself? Or I mean, I've never seen that many park cars like that by itself. Yeah, before, and, like and that's just the part. This, ha this has happened every day for 18 years, and she didn't even see the license plates. Like, some days I'll go to the park, they'll be maybe one car with no license plate and then 10 oh, minutes yeah. later uh, 20 cars with no plates will show up statistically impossible and that's not even close to what's done around my house mm -hmm. every day or um, at coffee shops or restaurants where I go where I have video I'll video I'll go to a restaurant I'll video the cars right mm -hmm. before I go in and when I walk out a half an hour later there'll be tons of cars and twos and no plates. The same as the park, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't, you haven't seen a lot of that. You did show me some of the cars with no plates too. Yeah. Like several actually. So okay. like that. And you so. think that Well I've never seen that many cars with no plates. Because it's pretty <laughs> rare you see I mean I don't yeah. if you're by a dealer, like we're in Thousand Oaks now and there's there's tons of dealers. Mm. Um, so you could sort of say, okay, there's gonna be some cars by the dealers with no plates. Mm -hmm. But in public parking lot after parking lot, right? Right. It's once in a while you see a no plate, right? Yeah. Well, when this started around 2011, there was about 40 percent in each lot, especially the places that I go or the types of places. So, for example, everyone knows I like to go to coffee shops. So after that, at every coffee shop, you would see 40 percent of cars with no plates or backwards mm -hmm. in coffee shops. Now, Brittany hasn't seen all that because it's just too much. Yeah to show someone. I mean, you can't sit there and shoveling that much video. And I have over 10 terabytes of things like this all day and night. But okay, so anyways, oh. the park seemed pretty out there and strange. Like, because I remember your reaction, like I'm I seeing like, it, oh but- I was like, oh my gosh, there's like, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Like there are like all these. Yeah. Pairs. And I don't know if you've already told them or whatever, but the um, significance of the pairs and like the license plates and what that entails. You know what I mean? Like what yeah. they do, like- Well, we get, no, I mean, I, I've mentioned on my website, but for this interview, we'll, I'll state it again. The okay, the, the tactic of, of twos from a common sense. I mean, nobody's actually told me directly. Hey, Kevin, this is why we're doing this to you. Mm -hmm. um, if you walk around, let's say you're walking home and you see one of each car. You see a Civic. You see a Trans Am. You see a Camaro. You see a Lamborghini. You're not going to think. Right. Anything. You're just going to be like, okay, oh, no, no, I'm walking home, whatever, who cares. Mm -hmm. But if you walk outside and you see two white Civics, and then you see two blue Civics, and then together, and then you see two white Jeep Cherokees, all of a sudden your thought process is going to go, what the hell? Mm -hmm. There's two of these, there's two of those, this, and then of course it escalates. You might say, hey, you bro, or someone might say, hey, you bro, 
in Woodland Hills and then instantly you drive to Thousand Oaks or Camarillo or Las Vegas or Florida and the next person you have contact with mimics the same exact thing mm -hmm. or they would do it to me on Hollywood Boulevard too on Friday or Saturday night someone would say something from a car and then someone mm -hmm. randomly would drive by a different person and say the same exact thing in twos showing that there's mass internet based communication tools mm -hmm. to screw with this guy until his brain gives out and they put me in a mental institution or jail cell but remember working with the police mm -hmm. that's the most important right. part and people might say like well they probably they just say the same thing to you you know yada yada but what you're saying is over years and years and years and years and like all at once like yeah. more so than the normal yeah i'm saying all day, night, 24-7, mm -hmm. every single day, every country, every state, every person on the internet, every person out in public, mm -hmm. all have access to these tools based on the internet, which were built by the police and government, um, to torture, hurt, harm, maim, torture, kill, or try to provoke reactions mm -hmm. to set someone up to remove them from society. And working with security companies too, which follow me around from place to place. I saw that as yeah. well, the woman the security woman in the parking lot who started, I was like, oh my gosh, she was very upset for some reason because she started yelling at you and calling you names and stuff. Which, which, oh in yeah, uh, down at Woodland Hills, the girl looks mm -hmm. like she works. Actually, the security company, which I think is a, a Ventura County security company, mm -hmm. they have working in Woodland Hills. I don't even know if they're actually working in these setups. She's seen uh, the two police setups one day Back to back, two days in a row, mm -hmm. one at a Starbucks on Oxnard and Canoga with the police and citizens, and the next, it might even been that night or the next day, at Coffee Bean on Ventura Boulevard um, and Topanga, Gateway Plaza, working with a girl in a pink Corvette named Angeline, and ironically, there are two cop cars out in your parking lot right now, parked backwards, mm -hmm. pointing towards where she parked. Uh, mm -hmm. the other day showing and the police have been here have had police present the last three times I've been here um, since Jason uh, Schwetz the owner of this property is trying to set me up with the, the receptionist um, Rhonda mm -hmm. um, and then basically threatening my life in a very vague way if you want to talk to Brittany blah 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 uh, you need to act professional but that didn't really make sense because professional is to them is about you we're censoring your speech and me not doing anything wrong but being a human being and I'm not an employee here anyways I'm a customer right. seeing my or let's see my therapist so if I joke around or make jokes and laugh I can't understand how that's any of their business but they're sort of trying to do what everyone does to me is curve it into something else to throw in the little cryptic message if you want to see Britain well First of all, why would someone word mm -hmm. if you want to see Brittany? Because supposedly it's about my behavior and my conduct, which is just fabrications. But what does that have to do with seeing Brittany, right? And mm -hmm. so the fact that he's coming out, if you want to see Brittany, you have to do what I tell you, right. is really about uh, we're going to ratchet down on you and torture you, and you're going to have to put up with the attacks so that we can get a reaction with the police. Mm -hmm or don't see Britney. Basically, we don't want you talking just like the death threats down from place to place I have on video, but especially down here at Starbucks. You had better not talk. And he's saying, this is all on video by the way, and he's saying, or what, you know, him getting up, getting in my face, and this and that. Um, and I've had endless death threats everywhere, especially in Thousand Oaks and uh, down LA. And, whatever on video on um, your snitch you you seen the your snitch your dead one yeah. with the dog attacker the one i've seen a couple of those yeah that there. guy has a police trained canine um and that is after he actually attacked me with the dog mm -hmm. uh which is all recorded on audio and video and detective shapiro says there's nothing here i'm delusional and i'm imagining it even though she has the video of the entire incident and the death threats right that's something that I don't know. I would really like to hear talk from to the police. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I would love to, to get them in front of a camera. Or something. Just regardless of 
like the stuff that isn't like physical evidence of this happening you know like that stuff that happened to you you were harmed you know yep. you had cuts you i saw everything the dog attacker the threats i've seen those things and so something needs to be done okay. about that yeah don't you think it's strange that all that information i have i have on my website i have a a page mile long mile long police refusing to help all the police reports all going to all the detectives um, even the conversations of them telling me it's okay for groups to gather, get together and torture and kill me if they don't physically touch me, um, which is very strange. Mm -hmm. So I would love them to have a dialogue like that, but we all know that would never happen. I would just... Uh, because... I mean, I think that kind of... I would really like that. Like, I yeah. would like to understand what... Oh, from a psychological... Well, just what's going on and how you can protected I guess does that make sense yeah. because like these well, what do you think I mean from when you, when you have a psychology degree mm -hmm. uh, you're handing them crime after crime people are coming after you mm -hmm. they keep lying you're imagining it you're all alone and you're isolated mm -hmm. they've, they've come in at five years old they've isolated destroyed my reputation and credibility and spew lies to the entire planet to isolate destroy um, and then crack down He's crazy, we need to remove him from society. But what do you think, what does your gut or your degree or whatever mm -hmm. tell you of why if you walk into the police who job is to protect, yeah. no matter what, um, people to protect and serve, um, and you keep handing them on a weekly uh, basis, you keep calling them, there's lizard tails on my doormat, you've seen that. Yeah. Um, and you keep handing them and the, the proof and evidence, flat, black and white. We're not talking theory here. We're talking on video and photos. Why mm -hmm. do you think? Nothing's done about it. Correct. I feel like you're just dismissed. And okay, but why? That's why I want to. Talk I mean, to if them. I'm handing them evidence, I'm I'm handing them a closed and shut case. I'm doing their entire job for them because they refuse. So why aren't they making the arrest, putting a stop to it? Telling people to leave Kevin Perlman alone. We know what you're doing. Right. What do they say to you? They just try Nothing. to make me look crazy. They either provoke me with the tactics or the little cryptic threats, kind of like Jason Schwetz or. Um, when they came to your house, trying to talk to you. Uh, when they came to my house, when I called about the rat's tail. Yeah. This is actually down the list, but when I called about the rat's tail, um, they came out. They refused to look at it. Remember, these people have tried to break in my house, I think, six or seven times now, once with my father, I see uh, getting past the things. front gate. But when I'm going to let them in to see that someone put a rat's tail or a lizard tail on my mat, welcome mat, um, they refused to come in, and they told me that I'm a 5150 violent paranoid schizoid. Okay, just for the record also, you've never been violent or aggressive or agitated. You've been nothing but polite and very respectful of me. You know, I've yeah. never felt threatened by you yeah. at all. Well, I'm this so way with everyone. I know. For, uh, I know. But and so the way that they are perceiving you or trying to make you appear, things they're telling you are just not true. Like you're a Correct. And I have all stuff. sorts of um, defamation, screenshots of defamation, how I'm breaking into properties and I'm attacking people, doing all these things. And that's but you Yeah. Everything I've seen, you would never do such a thing. But, but don't you so. think it's strange? It not only are these lies being made up, but they instantly go worldwide. I mean, that's the strange part, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because you it's you say like there and here, and I've seen both places, and like you said too, like wherever you go, the same stuff is happening. And like I haven't seen those yeah. videos, obviously, in like Colorado or wherever. Yeah, of course, but, a long time um, ago. Yeah. But in Woodland Hills and here, I've seen videos, and so it's not just isolated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's worldwide. Yeah, yeah. And, and if we're all the way out in Thousand Oaks and she's seen it, in the argument, oh, it's just a few people out there. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, but think about the, the food for thought, or so so the viewers can understand. Um, Kelly Hatch is sent after me when I'm 21 to follow me from um, Calabasas High, and I go out to college in Southern Oregon State College, and Kelly Hatch is notified, follow Kevin up. Now, I wasn't friends, had no contact, never spoke with Kelly Hatch. Follows me up. They put her above me in the dorms, mm -hmm. a floor above, so I'm pretty much under her. And um, I recognize her, like, you know, you look really familiar, but because, uh, and so we start talking, and we become friends, and this and that. And then later on, I find out Kelly Hatch 
after telling me um, to borrow an X-Acto knife because I was working on those um, stereo plates in the 80s. Mm -hmm. What do they call them? I don't remember what they call the slots, but you had mm -hmm. to cut out plexiglass plates to slide your, uh, this was back in the 80s, <laughs> or 90s. Um, and so I knew, because she's an artist and had her art kit and this and that, can I borrow your X-Acto knife? Sure, go in the room, my door's open. And then after this, the entire world, literally, is told I broke in her room and also that I stole her Jeep Cherokee. Okay, kind of strange. Mm -hmm. But remember, even if I had done that, or I should say if it was any other person, it would be a small little local matter and this and that, and it would be over with and blah, blah, blah. So why did it go worldwide, right? You, just so they all are clear on this, like how you know that it's worldwide and not just like... Uh, because the gang stalking tactics are based on several things. They're example of the patterns of twos we're talking about. Remember that these tactics are literally in the thousands. So the cars and twos is just one of these tactics. Mm -hmm. um, all of my conversations are mimicked off Twitter, Facebook, or from person to person. So if I walk into a 7-Eleven right here and go, all righty, like joking around uh, Jim, Jim Carrey jokes or something, all righty then, um, I'll then, let's say the next week I fly out to Las Vegas or Florida or speak with programmers in Ukraine or Philippines, Russia, uh, Japan. They'll start mimicking what I say back to me from this one event at 7-Eleven. Right, and the cars, and uh, the clothing colors, and all these things. So it's this mind game of like, I know you, but I don't know you. I don't know you, but I'm gonna mimic back each and every aspect of your life back to you until it's so blatantly obvious, but you can't tell anyone because you're all alone and you're isolated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and it took you, like, if this wasn't instant, you said too, it took you a long time to understand and realize what was going right when you were like 29? Yeah, it took me a good, I'd say six years to really understand things and just mm -hmm. get past that I can't believe I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Right. And the personalities of the anger from my family or my friends. And remember, it starts with Mike Huntley basically telling me he's working with the police. I'm a dead man. It wasn't that direct, but mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't believe what I was hearing because it wasn't direct and it was very... I've given you enough rope to hang yourself with, we're using the system against you, uh, have a good life now with an angry voice, quoting lines from Crocodile Dundee, um, I can't remember the exact line, it's like, when s we have a problem we tell Wally and Wally tells the town and no more problem, hinting that he's actually disseminating information to use against me in an illegal, unconstitutional way, and then things like, you're joking around before you really understand and you sort of lightly grab his neck like we gotta start making money. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, the, the context, I've known this guy for 25 years so it's not some stranger I'm putting my hands on. Mm -hmm. After that, random people all around the city saying they tried to choke and kill him, right? Now, that's just one of these thousands and thousands and thousands of mm -hmm. dramatized out of context lies, but nobody's questioning the way that the information's flowing. I mean, that's the entire argument. It's not that Kevin's the devil child, devil spawn, breathing fire and this and that. It's um, why are these people disseminating as much information across the entire planet against to use against someone and trying to collect and twist and contort whatever they can get or just make up late lies to the world, right? right? That's the real question. Yeah, because you also, like, I don't know if everyone knows already, but you went to school, you got degrees, you were doing, like, amazing work, right? And everything yeah, I mean, I don't want to look, I don't want to I'm sorry, I've like, seen some of it, but, like, you're very talented. I was a guy fact. in a pile of seven billion people trying to do something with his life, uh, working for Universal Studios, mm -hmm. modern vi video film, coming out of University of Colorado after Southern Oregon State College, uh, into visual effects, 3D animation, .NET programming, SQL programming, IT, whatever, just trying to make it and survive and do something with their life. Right. Started my own company, a very small cheese ball company, nothing, we're not, you but know. You did, you did all these but things. But it, it's, yeah. it's, I was sabotaged before ever putting my foot on the ground, if that makes sense. 
at 29 is when you started to Yeah, I mean, it starts at 5, but at 29... It's when you became really aware yeah, and, I, and I realized Mike Connolly was sent into my life at 14 to, I'm watching you over you and you better be a perfect person and you better not do anything... No, we're not talking about crimes. You better not do what we don't want you to do. And that includes, like, don't put salt on your food, don't eat more than one donut a day, don't drink coffee, right? Things that are unconstitutional or socialist, but you're met with you're a dead man if you veer past that. Right. Um, okay, so we're, we're kind of going off Sorry. the list here. <laughs> okay, so... Um, we talked about the death threats, the dog attacker. So, look, so the dog attacker, you saw your snitch, your dead. I saw that, and then I also saw the pictures of when you're in the hospital, right? With your um, red pants and blood. Yeah, and yeah, blood, dog bites, pants ripped, shirt ripped, ripped Shapiro. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened, and you're imagining it. And even on the doctor's report, he tries to, even though it states I was treated for a dog bite, he puts to the top, I suffer from delusional disorders. Okay. Well, I don't know MDs, or not MDs, I don't know ER doctors, mm -hmm. some psychiatrists have, or psychiatrists have MDs, but I don't know ER doctors, they put things like he suffers from clinical labels on ER reports, right? I don't know anything about He suffers about from that, schizophrenia, he suffers, they don't put that on those reports. You come in for a physical injury and they put right. how they treated you. Did they put that on there? Yeah, they did, okay. but at the top, so they played this game. Um, Detective Shapiro and Angela Storch say, oh, can you get me the report from the ho West Hills Hospital? Mm -hmm. Sure, and I get, now if you think about it, the detective would probably never ask that, they would just go in and ask the doctor questions. Um, so I go, I get the report, I give it to her. Um, she says, oh, it says you suffer from delusional or disorder, which I saw that before I gave it to her, so I put it on my website, circled, and then showing below uh, mm -hmm. with the photos, right, showing that there's manipulation involved. Well, it's just, they did, it sounds like they didn't look at the facts on the sheet, like the pictures. Yeah, but and I mean, based on the that. common sense and the amount of times they're doing these things to me, right. the doctor was notified, we don't want this coming out. The doctor puts the bullshit into the report. Mm -hmm. um, she says, Kevin, give me the report. And she plays this game like, I don't have time, I'm too busy. So when I'm skimming down the report, oh, delusional disorder, I'm, I'm not looking below. Right, that's what I'm, like, yeah. that's what they see and then they dismiss the rest. Of course, but they damn well know what's going on with seven tire slashings, car keyings, um, 10 know. years of car defacings, thousands of pictures of these on my website and given I to them. I saw several of the photos you showed me about the different cars too, not just yeah. one car, but like there's, they were, it was yeah. horrifying to I see mean, what they did to you. If I'm cars. a police officer and a guy comes in like every week for years, like this was done, that was done, and I was a detective, first I said, get this as a detective, if I was a detective, I was like, oh gee, you don't think anything's going on here every single day, something's done to his car for 10 years. Did they ever, did you follow the report and did they ever do anything? Oh yeah, there's it? report after report, there's a page, a police refusing to help on my website. Okay. So uh, By came. chronological order, showing this was reported to the police, here's the police report, here's the proof of the crimes. Right. And like each time they tried to dumb down the report, like, um, you know, like car tire number six slashing. Oh well, you just have old tires, and the, right? Things like that. So they, they tried to stop it. They didn't take action on that, though. No, they, like they, they they every time I go in, they try to stop me from filing a police report, word things in such a way. Well, this isn't a crime. Okay. And then I sort of make them file the police reports. Yeah. Yeah. But remember, when they file a police report, it's then submitted to the detective to yeah. review to see if oh well, I think something strange is going on here. But the detectives are all told mm -hmm. not to do anything. So then I go straight to the detectives, and they keep lying to me, and they'll tell me, well, it's okay for people to get together and uh, abuse you to death until you're dead, provided you don't, they don't touch you. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm hearing this. Right. Yet I have video clips on my website from like something like Channel 4 News interviewing cops saying gang, stalk is, uh, gang stalking is real, and the cop admitting it's happening and it's unacceptable. So why would a cop admit that gang stalking is unacceptable, but then Kevin Perlman walks in, you're a dead man because they're not committing crimes. Right? I mean, right. 
So doesn't. what's the association? Why wouldn't they mm, say the same take thing action? Too. What Correct. reason? That's my question too. Like that's what's not making sense. Because they're an accessory. Okay. They're an accessory to murder. Right. But and once once that gets exposed, whoever is involved mm-hmm. will the, it'll it'll fall down like dominoes, and the dominoes will go right up to the top, mm-hmm. uh, opening up doors for conversations. Wait, this guy's being hunted, but the police won't help him. Who's responsible? Well, if the police are going to stop the crime, then the police are involved in the crime. Mm-hmm. So the police don't want. It coming out. So the guy who had a police trained canine, you're a snitch, you're dead, who attacked me with his dog, which you saw, yeah, which did. Shapiro said nothing happened and I was suffering from delusional or disorders. Do you see the connection? Wait, we're giving, and this guy was kind of a gang, mem- gang member thug guy. Mm-hmm. For all I know, without any proof, he probably cut some kind of deal. You know, they probably went to jail and they cut a deal with them. Hey, we'll let you out on good behavior or something, provided you go after Kevin. Something like that. I'm just mm-hmm. making it, well, that's a theoretical. Yeah. And he says, sure, you know, I get out of jail. As, here, we'll give you a police trained canine. I have photos and video of the canine unit going into the Met property, picking up and dropping off the dog. Mm-hmm. That's pretty strange. Um, okay, I haven't seen those, <laughs> but that is. <laughs> yeah, right. I saw the video of the dog um, and the owner. Um, Which is then, bald, like Dinsey. Mm-hmm. And then I saw the aftermath, like your pants and leg and all that. So it's like you can't deny that something yeah. happened there, like the dog attacked you, you know? Yeah. And so I don't know his, I don't know the owner, I don't know any of that stuff, but regardless of that at all, like there was a crime that was committed, like yeah. if something should have been done. Yeah, I have something like, I believe, eight videos of them throwing things at my car. Um, I think about five years since you're dead. Uh, faggot, bitch, whatever. All just thuggy intimidations uh, tactics. Um, he actually had a stack of mail, stolen mail, when he attacked me with the dog. Okay. And ironically, Dinsey, on his Facebook account, has these articles about people stealing mail, which is actually Dinsey scams because of all the things that Dinsey's posting on his Facebook, these crimes are happening around mm-hmm. um, cover up, like cover up crimes, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, no. So this guy who has a police trained canine, who has a stack of everyone else's mail, if he has a police tr- police trained canine, he's working with the police. Mm-hmm. But wait, didn't see he's trying to catch someone involved in his okay. mail theft? Mm-hmm. Wait, doesn't really add up, right? Some freaky's going on with the police, mm-hmm. right? And didn't see did, when you first met him. How long ago did you first meet him? Well, I actually met him around 2013 on arrests okay. with his partner, Jensen, which was the lead. Jensen was the lead. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jensen was telling me things like, you're not allowed to put a tripod on the sidewalk, this and that. And he starts mentioning that um, if I take a picture of a child, I'm a pedophile, um, and things like this. Mm-hmm. And then trying to turn the conversations around on me and make it look like I was this or that, jumping from thing to thing. I said, you know, I want your badge number. And then he got mad, said, oh, you want my badge number? So he writes me up a misdemeanor ticket, mm-hmm. misdemeanor ticket for not a, um, what, or what's it called? Um, an infraction, mm-hmm. we're talking sitting on the sidewalk. A misdemeanor ticket for sitting on the sidewalk, mm-hmm. which they refused to give me the discovery and police reports. Okay. Um, basically mad because I wanted the badge number to report him to internal affairs. Mm-hmm. Right, because I knew that he was on the side of these people mobbing me to death. And when he's coming after me saying, you know, you don't talk or I'm trying to silence you, I want the badge number. Well, he showed his true colors mm-hmm. by saying, oh, you want my badge number? Well, now I write you up this, I arrest you for a misdemeanor. Um, and then I write it on the ticket. Here's, and he says, here's the badge number, right? Okay, okay now Dinsey was his lackey partner. Now Dinsey's running for. Sit, uh, city Council? City Council District 12 mm-hmm. and Dinsey comes back around 2016 2017 in an angry rage trying to cover this all up. Why do you think 
in the 2016-17 arrest, mm -hmm. uh, paying off Scroggins to say I threatened to kill him with the 422, and all these things with these mass attacks and setups. Mm -hmm. um, do you see a connection between Mr. I want to be a politician or mm -hmm. climb up the ladder, but I can't if I have this dark cloud of what we've done to Kevin Perlman mm -hmm. hanging over his head, right? right which links into bigger, bigger, huger things starting at five years old. Mm -hmm. And have you ever talked to him? Like no, face I'm to not. face? Jim no, I mean. About, I asked him. He arrested me, read me his Miranda rights, and then wanted information after, and asked after they brought me into the holding center before throwing me into jail. He kept hinting about um, T1 class between first and second grade, mm -hmm. um, showing that he had been contacted by my family and those working with him. Mm -hmm. Because no, why would he have this information? And who would care anyway? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I just okay. So. Okay, so let's actually. I want you to go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. That, then I'll ask you. Um, sure. Okay, so you've seen the mass groups showing up outside of Starbucks, Jamba Juice restaurants, other places on video, working with security companies and groups, private citizens, um, and the police, all working together. Um, and me calling it out on video, narrating on video before it even Like they're going to pull up now. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, within minutes, um, and these vets done to me endlessly and over and over. Mm -hmm. I mean, what did you, what did you think? Well, I've definitely seen um, that one video of the Starbucks. Like right down in Thousand Oaks by Thousand Oaks Mall. Was that the Thousand Oaks? Yeah. Wasn't it? Okay. Him coming up to you and giving you that paper and saying you can't come home anymore? Are you talking about a different time? The one where there was a security guard on the Starbucks employee that approached you saying you have to leave and we can't be here and you can't come back. Um, well, I don't think they had any. You showed me that one on video and later it was the... This was where? I thought it was in Sino or in the valley. Um, when you're sitting outside of the table and he walked up with the paperwork. Oh no, that was in Topanga and Ventura. Okay. Maybe around 2008. Okay. And he tried to force me into signing false confessions. That's what you said. Okay. Um, um, we don't want you here um, unless you sign this paper. Mm -hmm. This was uh, using security, Paul, security guard John Paul Naranjo, who two years later punched me seven times in the back of the head. Uh, to try to silence me because I got photos of the paper mm -hmm. showing what it was. He refused to show me what was on the paper, but wanted me to sign a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, the coffee shops don't walk up to you and say, hey, you're a bad person and this and that, we don't want you here, so sign, sign, clear, clarify your confessions that you're a bad person, right? Well, they try to get coerced false confessions, mm -hmm. but also I wasn't allowed to see the paper. I said, give me a copy. No, that's what you saw. No, that's all on video, right? Yeah. And then when I said they were going to be sued, they ramped up their attacks with the police. Mm -hmm. Showing they don't want the doors open to the larger and bigger and bigger picture of what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And those are all cover-ups to try to make it look like I'm a public nuisance. Okay. Yeah. Right. The mass attacks. Attack Kevin. Attack Kevin. Attack Kevin. We can't set him up. So now we're going to fabricate all the things we did to Kevin on this piece of paper. But one of those things they were trying to say I was masturbating in the bathroom mm -hmm. and they were mad at me for calling it out because they had turned the lights off on me 14 times in the bathroom mm -hmm. uh, part of it on video and things like that um, so they went around saying I'm masturbating in public and this and that well you brought even you said how would they know if I'm masturbating in the bathroom yeah that's I mean, your business there's no way they would know yeah what's unless going they have spy the cameras room. in the bathroom mm -hmm. right yeah. And if they have spy cameras in the bathroom, there's bigger issues whether someone masturbated in the bathroom or not. Right. <laughs> Absolutely, because that's a complete invasion. Yeah. Totally yeah. illegal. <laughs> so there's no way, like, that's your business. Yeah. That's your, you know. So those are some of the things they're trying to cover up. And then you'll notice I have some other video at different locations. How then I've supposedly masturbated at these different locations. Mm -hmm. You get the idea. Now, they went for years, different things. First it was I'm watching porno and all the coffee beans and as I masturbated in the bathroom at Starbucks, right? But none of it exists. Right. They're just fabrications. And they 
they sort of escalate on these things. Like maybe I go do a, a photo shoot with a model, mm -hmm. and they go, oh, well, he because he did a photo shoot with a model, now we're going to say he masturbated in the bathroom at a public place. Mm -hmm. And then you would question, well, how do they know? They did the photo shoot. Correct, right? So these boundaries of every single minute detail are being collected and twisted and contorted in larger and larger worldwide circles, mm -hmm. trying to set me up, frame me, make me look crazy, make me look like a public nuisance, all based on private information. Mm -hmm. I mean, not 100% private, but still, those people are going to talk within their small circles. It's not going to instantly go worldwide to every coffee shop or restaurant worldwide. Mm -hmm. And when I say that instantly, I mean within minutes it's transmitted across the entire planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, who's capable of doing that? Not me. <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. it takes someone with lots of money and resources and internet-based tools. Um, in this case, NSA level uh, tools with the police and government mm -hmm. um, building systems around me, especially starting in 1994 when the internet came around to burgar, maim, torture, kill, and ratchet down more and more until they can try to get me to threaten people or go after people and make me look like a violent paranoid schizo, right? Mm -hmm. And those labels change every single day. And at one time, you didn't know what was going on, you said, and so you kind of like, like your, with your mom and stuff, and you saw all these doctors and all these people, right? Yeah, well, I mean, around 29, my mother right. said, my past caught up with me. I mean, that's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. My father said, I know what I did. Um, a Starbucks employee at Topanga and Ventura, um, Derek or Garrett, said, uh, it's my transgressions. Okay, so right there, in black and white, you know people are accusing you of crimes. So when you ask what you did, your dad, right? You know what you did? Like he'll, that's his All response. All of them play the same game. You're yeah. a criminal, you know what you did, you're a monster, it's your behavior, you're out of control, blah, blah, blah. And then I say, well, what did I do? Not one would answer. Not one. My mother, I never said that. My father, um, after saying you know what you did, he said, um, well, when people do something, they're not told what they do because they can lie. Well, that's a psychotic murdering behavior. Sure, I walk up to you. You know what you did. Then I grab a pickaxe. Bam! In your head, okay? Right, that's different. That's, <laughs> that's the same exact thing that's going on, just not on a mental level. Right. right? That's a physical level. But the mental level is the gang stalking. You know what you did, so we're going to mentally bludgeon you to death mm -hmm. with cars and identical cars and two showing up at your house every day until your brain swells and, and it makes you feel crazy yeah like and you then know, the gas with enough mental sick. anguish you break down and die right or something really bad happens or you react and they go oh well he hallucinates and he just went after you right, right. Uh, the whole that's the entire concept of gang stalking your gas lady will you tell like what you told me how you described what happens to you every day it's like horrendous and so like what you go through like the hot poker thing you know Have oh you told, I like mean my description was um, the psychological abuse is like someone uh, cramming a cow prod up your ass every five minutes mm -hmm. uh, except gang stalking nobody touches you so it's okay to inflict pain according to the police it's incredibly painful like this is torment it's not yeah. it's, it's like your analogy was like I was like oh my god yeah and like then it's you know but the, but it doesn't but that the the criteria for a crime uh, motive mm -hmm. premeditation execution mm -hmm. okay so there's nothing in the law books that says you have to touch someone for it to be a crime that's only assault or battery mm -hmm. crime I want to kill that person so I put poison in their food. You didn't touch him. You had a reason, motive. Um, you executed the your premeditated thought, I want to kill them. Mm -hmm. And that's the crime of murder. It has nothing to do whether you touch someone or you don't touch someone. And the cops damn well know this. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, but when you saw, okay, so but when you saw these events down here um, at I'm the Starbucks. Which Okay, so let me refresh your memory. You saw the video, um, and it was actually two days of video. I, don't, I think I only showed you the last day. 
I go down there, they have a Mike Wexler look-alike. Oh, uh, someone, someone that told me I'm not allowed to take pictures. Originally, my brother's friend at University of Colorado, I don't want to go into the beginning of how it associates with my brother and all of his friends who has threatened me to put me, he and his friends are going to put me in a mental institution, but they had a Mike Wexler, Mexler, uh, Wexler look-alike, and they had a porn star here in New York look-alike in the Jamba there. Mm -hmm. And I was rattling off how when I arrived there was an undercover security car, security guard waiting in a car that didn't work there, um, trying to be all stealth. Um, I talk about on video the Mike Wexler look-alike and how he's signaling over to security, mm -hmm. uh, how instantly when I go into job I come out, another security guy goes instantly in. Um, how I say the police are probably going to show up on video and instantly the police show up and they go into the Jamba. Yeah. So you've seen all this on video, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. how is it that I'm rattling these things off? What's going to happen? Who's security? Who's undercover? Or citizens working with the police or security? Mm -hmm. If I'm some crazy guy, mm -hmm. I mean, how am I rattling this off before it happens? Right. Well, because it's happened numerous times. Correct, right? And so you learn to read how these groups signal to one and the or the other, mm -hmm. um, and these things happen. And in that, just that one video, we had police following, police, we had police presence, we had security presence, we had tons of citizens, and then we, in between the, all that, we had the clothing patterns, remember all the grays and blacks? Yeah. The, uh, bl what was it, black pants, saw black pants, saw gray shirts, you saw like, what, 10, 15? Almost everyone, honestly. Right, yeah, okay, so, so, um, Okay, so the police will say that I'm crazy and these are all perfectly normal human behaviors. Mm -hmm. But last I checked, as mass conspiracies of people told to do things to someone in patterns is not normal. Um, okay, so, so you see what happens each and every time I go to the police for mm -hmm. help on audio and video. And each and every time they tell me they won't help me and try to cover up the incident, stop me from getting help or say I'm delusional and it didn't happen. Uh, we sort of talked about yeah. that. Um, I think last month, what, it, what was the video? Oh, that's right, I showed you the video of after about the sixth police attempt to break in my house. Um, and one time didn't see his little, PI, uh, little police buddies posing as FBI. Mm -hmm. Um, and trying to break in with the trying to see if the doors unlocked and things like that. Yeah. Um, and dumping those things on your. Oh yeah, dumping, taking the box and pouring the popcorn and then getting caught on camera yeah. and going, oh no, what do we do now? And then knocking, right? Yeah. Uh, while try well, on audio, you heard it right. See if the doors unlocked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, co cops don't do that. They don't try to break in people's houses, um, and. Um, Unless they have a warrant and a cause to, okay. you know, yeah. like that. No, uh, what I saw was definitely abnormal. I've never, you know, it was yeah. two. F what did they say? FBI. FBI. Yeah, they said they were FBI at the same time. Trump checking mm -hmm. the door. This is the door unlocked. There were like six individuals there. Yeah. For one person. For and that was the day after they tried to set me up at the park. Can you remind me? Remember when the, woman the video. Was there in the Remember the video of. Um, Okay, remember, Dinsey doesn't want me at the park, same with the rest of the world, but Dinsey has threatened me over and over, saying, basically saying in his own way, I don't leave my house. Um, so Dinsey doesn't want me ever leaving my house, because my house apparently is my cage, kind of like Maggie, the cage my father locked our English sheepdog in, mm -hmm. when I had the entire backyard to run around in for half of its life, for more than half of its life. Same weird things are being done to me, um, didn't see coming out on two calls, this was years ago, at the park, and the same within a half an hour, two calls, Kevin's taking a walk in the park, come out and thug him. Didn't see comes out with a, like an Ellen Barkin lookalike, ironically, and she wasn't doing anything police -y. I don't even I don't know, know if... I don't know if you've talked to me about No, I haven't, actually. Okay. Um, she looked like a fake, I can't tell you, but she looked like a fake. Um, but she she had a resemblance of Ellen Bark, and then they do this type of thing a lot. Try to flip me out. Um, but Dinsey basically comes out. First, different cops come out 
Uh, they say you're doing, I can't remember, they say you're harassing people. Was, uh, I'm simply sitting on a bench minding my own business. <laughs> um, and then he leaves and then I start to take another lap around the park, sit on a bench, and then they say you're on private property or this or that. And Dinsey's telling me, well, while at the park, you're on private property. Now, Dinsey, I'm at the park. Look, am I on private property? Right. Right? And at the same time, sprinklers are hitting me in the head and this and that. Mm -hmm. And he says, go home. I can arrest you. I can do this. You better go home. Well, I don't think... Technically, I didn't have to leave the park because it's a public place. Right. But I decided to leave to see what he did and make sure that I photographed everything. Mm -hmm. And then I took a walk. I defied him, so to speak, but nothing illegal. I took a walk to the Gateway Plaza shopping center to get food, and guess what? He followed me to the Gateway Plaza mm -hmm. parking lot, and he said, didn't I tell you to go home? Well, wait, the jobs or the cops only roll is to stop or prevent crime, not even really prevent it, just a crime in progress, yeah. to come out. And if the cops come out and you're not committing a crime, they can't really tell you to go home. Yeah. Uh, but I, I left anyways to see what he could do. And I was at the Gateway Plaza getting like a fat burger or something. And he saw me and he's like, didn't I tell you to go home? I said, well, you know, I left the park and I'm going to get food. And he was huffy and puffy and like a 10 year old kid, go, go home, you know, like, and yeah. um, losing control, a control freak losing control, mm -hmm. right? But wait, so you're saying if someone calls you with a lie about some park incident, or let's say it's true, and then you leave and you go somewhere else, and then Dinsey shows up, or the other cops, because they do this from cop to cop, just like there's cop cars out here all the way in Thousand Oaks, uh, three times this week, or in the last three visits following me to this, sh this shopping center, um, if I left the park, why do I have to go home? Why can't I go get food or uh, go to my friend's house or go here? Why do I have to be stay in my house? Did you ask him? No, of course not, because you're not talking about irrational irration people. Mm -hmm. You're talking about psychotics with a badge. Mm -hmm. And remember, I've had death threats before that from Officer Toro. If you ever take a picture of a person, I will exercise the law in my own way. Right. Well, it's not illegal to take pictures. And most of the time, you're not even, I mean, from everything I've seen, it's not you filming people. It's you filming surround your surroundings and if people are well, in the Well, it's both, yeah. but, but you have to understand it's not the situation from the beginning. Correct. It's not the just The situation you, from yeah. the beginning are people mad because I got into studio photography on sets. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do? Linking back to Mike Wexler, 95. You're not allowed to take pictures of people. We're going to drive down to San Diego with San Diego PD set up operations for taking a photography class at the University of Colorado, which doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the progression starts with a girl named Aubrey Fisher sent after me, introduced through Brody Morales, working with the LAPD on these setup operations mm -hmm. and frame job operations who want to take me to strip clubs, um, the fourth person since 20, mm -hmm. um, in different states. Um, then Aubrey Fisher, well, because you're taking pictures of pretty women from websites like Model Mayhem or One Model Place, we don't want you doing that. But wait, what does that have to do with crimes? Mm -hmm. Right? And why does Aubrey Fisher care, who's posing to be an ex stripper and one of those hostess girls and this? Right? Yeah. And she's playing this game and it's about jealousy and this and that. But that's not what it's about. It's about someone who doesn't want. Kevin Burlman getting into studio photography mm -hmm. and then what happens is people start following you, hunting you and stalking you and then enough's enough, you've got to get proof and then they, tr they try to curb the argument from we don't want to do studio photography to you're taking pictures right. of people attacking you which is still not a crime mm -hmm. and then they play this game like well that could be offensive, well sure but so is killing you Okay, so Brittany's kind of taking charge of the conversation, but I mean, we only have an hour, so, and I'll talk forever, and trust me, the intricacies of my life going all the way back to five years old, I can just go forever because all these events connect from here to there, and they're all really spooky and creepy and freaky and unheard of, um, so I want to try to stick on topic because we only have about an hour left, and so I want to make sure we get these red and then we can kind of have a free-for-all 
picture? After that. We are okay, we already explained I, I mentioned here that tons of this evidence of proof were shown to the police and they refused to acknowledge it. We kind of already went through that. Um, tons of death threats by people working with the police, police refusing to help. Even out away from Woodland Hills, out here on Thousand Oaks, we also really went through that. But the, but like the point I was making is, where I'm out here in Thousand Oaks, not Woodland Hills. Um, set of operations with lead officer did see at the park. He doesn't want me going to or anything else for that matter. Showing up the next day, trying to break in my house and ask or and or ask questions if he can't break into the house to use against me. Um, this done over and over and working with private citizens um, in illegal community activities. Um, so that was kind of, I think we, I kind of got curved a little. We were talking about me at the park and what you saw on video with the girl mm -hmm. trying to reel me in to go yeah. after the homeless the under Sean Dinsey's duress and his illegal neighborhood watch groups, which aren't neighborhood watch groups, they're neighborhood stalking programs, mm -hmm. to eradicate imperfection um, and create like the superior race, or we don't want homeless in our neighborhood, so we're going to just rid them of the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you saw that on video, right? Remember? I saw I, the woman ask, you were walking around the property, yeah, I'm walking. and asking if you would go in and help that girl, right? Because she was Correct. in there with her the, makeup on the in the restroom or something. First it was, hey, why are you looking away from me? Remember mm -hmm. that? Um, like the mobster yeah. type of personality. And then it's, can you help me? Because my friend's in the bathroom and the door doesn't have a lock and there's a homeless guy by the door trying to set me up for something. Mm -hmm. And then her saying, will you take a picture of him? And me saying, well, I'll take a picture of everyone yeah. showing that I'm kind of like, I don't want to say fair and balanced, neutral. but it's a very Fox News thing, but neutral. I'm sure, thank you, neutral, that everyone gets, if there's a story, it's coming from every side, not just one person, mm -hmm. um, and then them getting mad, probably saying, well, Kevin took a picture of me, even though she asked mm -hmm. to take a picture, mm -hmm. right? With Sean Dinsey coming up the next day, sort of working all those angles on multiple things, but wanting to ask me questions of things that he could use against me to try to lock me away, throw me in jail, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you saw that, and the timing, I mean, the very next day, right after that, and the entire situation is on video. This is what I'm trying to do um, from the lady, showing right. that she's thugging the homeless. She's going after these poor people that have enough problems as it is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And She's not working alone. She's not some random angry citizen going, I'm trying to rid homeless people of the world. They're working with the Topanga Division LAPD. It's hard. It's like the hard thing is you're not able to just take things at face value because it goes, you know what I mean? Because of everything you've seen and experienced and been through. Like someone who doesn't understand what your life is like every single day would be like oh it's just like some lady asking you to like whatever whatever but no it's like so much deeper you know what i mean because a lot of people could be thinking like okay so what is oh, sorry leap that well, I, like homeless lady yeah or whatever. well i think the average person doesn't want to know those details mm -hmm. it's just when there's situations that are so deep uh, such deep conspiracies with yeah. with going up the ladder of people that they don't want those names coming out of the situations mm -hmm. and so to kind of get to the point Dinsey is not like on his Facebook those the screenshots I have or whatever mm -hmm. or him posting hey neighborhood watch meeting is canceled or we have a neighborhood watch meeting they aren't neighborhood watch mm -hmm. meetings they're neighborhood stalking meetings with the entire LAPD's knowledge and it goes up to the ladder to multiple divisions across the United States and security government, all sorts of illegal operations. It has nothing to do with crime, okay? Being homeless is not a crime. Having problems is not a crime. No, it's These not. These are not crime. No, and homeless, but it is not easy to be homeless. Like, that's not, they're Yeah, doing they got enough wrong. problems, like right? It's hard, it's not easy, Yeah, exactly. they're looking for their next meal. Oh, they don't yeah. know where to take a shower. Exactly. Didn't see, oh, that's right, Dinsey's Facebook. 
account linked that event. Remember the Facebook screenshot I gave you of Dincy stating um, the homeless lady, it was actually a homeless lady in the bathroom who told one of the people in the Woodland Warner Center area mm -hmm. that she lives in the bathroom and she has to fix her makeup or something. So ironically, obviously living in the bathroom isn't a literal, yeah. but it doesn't matter because these groups of people under Dincy and the LAPD's orders are go after this person because they're using a restroom to fix their makeup because they don't have a house. Right. Okay? That's pretty strange. Yeah, it's, it's sad. <laughs> Honestly, right? I, I mean, so people are being stalked, other than me, but I seem to be the biggest target because nobody wants to speak out. Mm -hmm. And you said people with... Would you say problems, issues, struggles, something like that? All the above. Um, remember, Dincy's Facebook states that people with mental illness um, could possibly in the future be a problem, so they need to be watched or forced into mental institutions. They should be, like, able to get the help they need. Like, Correct, but what... You know, not but be forced I mean, we've had, anywhere. We've had... I don't want to go too deep in this, but we've Sorry. had several conversations about the label... Correct. of crazy, the label of mentally ill. Label. What is mental illness? I mean, it's hey, did you break up with your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend and for six months you're depressed, so you need to be forced into a mental institution mm -hmm. and never have any life again because you're crazy and suffer from... Of course not, right? No, and most people different. that are actually clinically mentally ill, about 90% are harmless Oh, anyways. absolutely. That's the biggest thing is like everybody you hear the word like crazy or um, yeah. schizophrenic. I mean, or some whatever. girl that's an info it's or like in a porn or whatever could be good. Oh, she's crazy because she screws everyone. But right. but the relative, no, the no. relativity of crazy to, from one person's lifestyle to the next doesn't actually mean crazy. Crazy and what actually Unstable. is crazy, right? They're not definable. It's a vague label. Correct. Exactly. Everybody's a little crazy. Okay, so that legs, person's lay that sure. person according to Dincy, that person's crazy. Because There's no room for them dangerous. in society. Yeah. But what did they do? That doesn't matter because they're crazy. I, yeah. <laughs> right. And that's like you said, like there almost there's so many people with mental illness illness, whatever, like how you categorize it and like you said, a very, very, very small percentage of them are violent or have ever been violent. Correct. Like and the police's job is to Help them. Well, but the police's job... No, the police's job has nothing to do with mental illness. The police's job Protect. is to stop crime. Correct. Crimes in progress or crimes that have been committed, which obviously are going to be huge crimes. Mm -hmm. But um, by being, like you said, having a mental illness does not equal crime. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if someone actually clinically suffers from depression, they is help. it Dincy or Topanga Division's LAPD to say... We're going to force you in a mental institution, and you're not allowed to live with anyone else in society. That No, that'd be doing more harm. Okay, so they're not acting as police officers. They're acting as psychotic, like um, Hannibal Lecter mm -hmm. psychiatrists, right? Like something out of a horror movie with a psychology degree, right? Something. Or Dr. Giggles or something, right? I would like to, <laughs> I would really like to talk to them. Like you I mean, know, I mean, I would. That would never happen, but right, I mean, I would say right, give it a but try, but I they'll shut you down in the front door. Mm -hmm. um, but remember, this isn't just Dincy. I've had these conversations with Shapiro and Detective Angela Stewart. You're crazy, and I said uh, I have these phone recorded. I said so. What does that have to do with anything? Mm -hmm. I mean, whether someone wants to call me crazy or not is irrelevant. Is if I'm walking in and someone's attacked me with their dog and it's on video. That's what I'm saying. Correct. Like, it has nothing to do with your mental state or whatever, whatever else. Correct. You know, it's just the actual Even if I am crazy, happened. it's the, it, more so it's the police's job to stop the crime, right? That's what I'm saying, exactly. Like, there's evidence of a crime being committed, has been committed, you're bleeding. You know, like, why are they yeah. dismissing and that? and that's the question. Why? Yeah. What is it do they have to hide? Right. Right? It doesn't make sense why they would just dismiss that. There's some, like yeah, you, there's, you know what I mean yeah. when I say that. There's like, something hanging over their head that they don't want coming out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, does it appear that uh, Officer Sean Dincy, Toro, Jensen, and most others are all working outside 
the boundaries of the law. Um, I mean, we just, but still, for can the you, record. Do you mean anything specifically when you're saying boundaries of the law? Like, well, boundary, like, the, like as we just said, that the, the job of the police mm -hmm. is to protect, serve, stop crimes. Correct. And that is it. Yeah. So, does it appear that Officer Sean Dempsey, Officer Toro, if you ever take a picture of a person, I will exercise the law in my own way. Uh, by the way, I doubt a real name because he openly gave it before talking to me, and he's hinting about people sent after me in Southern Oregon State. Um, Officer Jensen, who came after me after tweeting to a girl named Louisa Jensen, linking it to um, Jen Hess sent after me by the LAPD, Mike Huntley and Paul Humphreys. Um, does it appear that Officer Sean Dinsey, Toro, Jensen, and most others in the LAPD or police are all working outside the boundaries of the law? Right. Well, like you just said, all it's just the law in one way, right? Correct. So that implies in itself that, that there is boundaries no law. don't matter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. They're not following laws. That's my... Mm -hmm. They're not... If a police officer... Let me rephrase it. If a police officer um, says... I think I'm a psychiatrist and I think you're crazy, so we're going to lock you away. Didn't see? Is he operating outside the boundaries of the law? Well, yeah, because he's not a psychiatrist. Correct. Okay, that's mm -hmm. that would be the correct answer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're on the same wavelength that these, these police officers aren't police officers. They're corrupt. Okay. Um, you haven't been out at Thousand Oaks with me but have seen photos, videos outside the building within minutes of going outside from the groups of strangers coordinating attacks, which isn't even close to where I live. And remember, we, are, we were only out there for less than a half an hour the other day. Mm -hmm. um, but can you kind of reiterate what you remember seeing? Um, well, I did see the clothing, the patterns. Okay, that do you remember what you saw? Camo. Okay, yeah, camo was one. And I did hear several of them. Okay, well, that the, the horns and twos and threes, which I have, mm -hmm. I talk about on my website. I have proof on my website, but it's extremely hard to edit together, so mm -hmm. you really understand the magnitude. But I literally have like thousands in one day and things like that all over Los Angeles directed me. But um, okay, so you saw that. And do you remember, which actually was just done to me a half an hour before coming here today, down at um, Thousand Oaks Fish and Chips and the bagel place next door, the two people that showed up, uh, blue shirts and white cords, all stripes at the same time. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, there were the flower pattern groups. I don't know if they were coming out. You told me about that. Okay, so, so last week or the week before, groups of people at the same time wearing flower print clothing. Um, and um, there was one more. Oh, that's right. The green and blacks and the green and black guy and the green and black Mini Cooper. Oh, yeah. Saw mm -hmm. that. Okay. So they started ramping up the green and blacks in the last week. And this isn't just here. This is around my house, too. So coming out of my house, people waiting for me in green and blacks and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, so you've seen it? Yeah. Okay. So you've seen it? There was um, something else called. Like you were saying, it's like near home. We are there unusual. Yeah, it, ha it has ramped down. Well, do you, okay, so what are the other things you probably noticed or that I've told you happening in this right here in this parking lot? Do you remember? The cars, the people. Just some know, of the, the other things, not necessarily last week, oh, but like some of the things I've showed you. The police? Just the, just the events, the stalking, in. and the police, but the, the stalking events. So, like, like last week, the police showed up, two of them. Today, two police cars are pointed in this back corner, pointed both backwards together and pairs of twos backwards, pointed looking at where they had a girl in a pink Corvette following mm -hmm. named Angeline. I now, Angeline, you saw other videos on that setup attempt video a couple close. months ago, maybe a month ago, at Stop. Woodland Hills Coffee Bean, mm -hmm. where with the security guard you mentioned yelling at me that I'm weird and like following all across like a hundred yards no. across the lot, trying to jump in front of my car, trying to make it look like I'm trying to hit her and things like that while yelling she at me. Screaming at you, yeah. Uh, um, and and she and you saw in the video 
that I had done nothing but walk into a coffee bean, buy a coffee, sit down for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and groups of people show up stalking me and trying to set me up, right? The groups, you mean like the two I'm talking about with the white? The like, remember I blue. had, I have a video online and I showed you back to back. I go down to one Starbucks, mm -hmm. people start provoking me, cops show up in hopes they can get a reaction. And then I go to the coffee bean either that night or the next day, and oh. um, oh. and I narrate on the camera. I'm walking in, I'm buying a coffee, I'm sitting here minding my own business. Mm -hmm. Here's Angeline with her pink Corvette. The couple, yeah. the girl with the pink shirt pink matching guy. the pink Corvette, trying to expose that I'm some kind of creep following her. What did they say? They said something they that was They pretended to be these touristy, um, oh, is that her? There she is. I'm following her. Something like that extent mm -hmm. in hopes that I would say, yeah, I'm doing that too. Right. And they didn't get the answer they wanted, so they started blurting out the cryptic stalking uh, mimics. Mm -hmm. And then I narrate in the camera, see something freaking is going on. The cops were waiting here pointing towards her car, she's waiting here, I go in, I'm coming out, these pink people are showing up, something's about to happen, mm -hmm. I think I say all that in camera, and then within like five minutes, starting to leave, the security guard following me as if I'm stalking the Angeline girl, mm -hmm. exposing themselves that they're involved in setup and frame job operations, mm -hmm. right? And then her following out here, her out here a couple weeks ago. With the yeah, and now the cops have been out each and every time, and working with Jason Sweats with the little blackmailing threat tactic. Got him talk to Brittany. And what what was all that he said? You need to be professional, or did he say anything else? Because you're very professional. Well, he was mad. He was trying to make up things like there's cards everywhere and this and that, and I'm doing this. But they're sort of linking it back to the first time I came in here, maybe five months ago, mm -hmm. and um, I don't want to get too deep because I have more questions. Okay. Um, get well, let, let me do it. I come in here five months ago. People start provoking me like usual. I pass out cards in self-defense. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. The Rhonda girl at the front desk getting mad because she doesn't want the truth coming out. Mm -hmm. Then trying to collect it and use it. He's a public nuisance because he's passing out cards. Mm -hmm. And then her telling you she doesn't want cards passed out in the office. That and me saying, okay, answer. fine. And me stating to Brittany here, and you can tell her that that's fine, but that's not going to stop the cards or me talking about my life anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. And them exposing themselves, showing that that's not enough. That's not really about this building and inside. It's about mm -hmm. something much bigger. And if I stop passing out cards in the building, like she says, but still talk to people about my life, they don't stop and they get angrier and angrier. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Right? Um. <laughs> because she's not mad that the cards are being passed out. Mm -hmm. She's mad about what they're trying to cover up and people they know what they're involved in mm -hmm. because they don't want the truth coming out so that the people they know look like bad psychotic murderers like they are. Does that make sense? I lost you a little bit. Okay. So uh, no, I think I get the what you're saying. For example, Kevin's a bad person because he did all these things, mm -hmm. so we're justified in following him around, killing him, or making him mentally ill, or ridding him of the world. Okay. But wait. The truth is, Kevin didn't do anything. Kevin doesn't know what this is even about. Mm -hmm. What if that got out? Now, even though there's no excuse for becoming a vigilante with worldwide conspiracies, mm -hmm. there is no excuse no matter what. There's no justification. But now, what if you find out that for 40 years, mass groups are hunting someone down to eradicate him, and they were lied to? It's all based on lies. Mm -hmm. Kevin, according to the police, Kevin supposedly killed someone. I supposedly killed someone. Remember, these lies change. These are in the thousands. They change from thing to thing. Mm -hmm. um, police, police walk up to you, and they, and they say, Brittany, that guy killed someone. I want you to help us rid them of the world. You say, okay. Mm -hmm. Then the truth comes out. Oh, Kevin didn't do anything. Now you're aiding and abetting a crime. Mm -hmm. Although you were always aiding and abetting a crime, mm -hmm. you just didn't know it if you have no common sense. Well, I would have <laughs> wanted to investigate even before I had agreed to that. Like, how do you know that? Like, do you know this but, dude? But what most do? the average yeah. same person goes, that's your deal. What the hell? Right? Yeah. Okay, exactly. if a cop comes up to me 
Kevin, we want you to help us go after that guy like they did to Terrence Scroggins. Mm -hmm. I say, get the fuck away from me. Right. That's your job. That's not my job. Exactly. My job's going out, making money, living my life, having friends and relationships. Your job, Mr. Uniform and Badge, is to stop crying. Exactly. And for Mr. Yeah. Uniform and Badge to walk up to me and say, Kevin, stop I want crying. you to become a vigilante for me. Well, any time that person like Terrence Scroggins interacts and says, I'm going to become a police officer, he's not a police officer. Mm -hmm. He's a criminal. The police can't tell you whether it's a neighborhood watch group or anything else, to take police. part in being a, pretending to be a police officer. Right. The girl at the park was committing a crime, going after people. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the point, is they're aiding and abetting murder operations, stalking operations, and outside the boundaries, a lawyer or an accountant or a therapist or a gas station owner, which is contacted by a police officer saying, hunt down and kill that person because they're criminals, mm -hmm. is committing a crime by taking the law in their own hands, whether they're told to by a police officer right. or not. Because at no point are they police officers. Mm -hmm. They didn't go to police academies, they don't have badges, they don't have badge numbers, mm -hmm. they're not in a system of police, no. so they're just citizens committing crimes. Okay, mm -hmm. do you see the cover up? Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyways, um, so what is your opinion as to whether or not the police know this could be going on and done in my life? Um, all these things that you've been trying to show them? Yeah. Well, I mean, clearly it's very factual. Like, you can't really deny the videos and stuff. Like yeah, I mean. So, you know, if you, they have seen the video, they know. Period. Right? Like the dog attacks and all these things. Like well, I'm asking you. I mean, I already know. No, I, mean, I, I think that completely, like, when I saw that, I was appalled. I'm like, how could yeah, you not? Yeah, I mean, how could you not? See, it You have a video of a guy unleashing. I'll leave out the fact that I know it's a uh, police trained canine and the fact that I'm watching him make the dog attack on cue, but it's all on video that he's attacking me with a dog. The well, seven tire slashings, some more vague than others, but some two tire slashings in one day. 2012, my Jaguar, two, two tires at the same time. Top slashings, all the car, rating, all the right? The yeah. constant uh, spit on the car every day, the fag written on the car, the bitch, the 187 working with Victoria Walker. Uh, sent after me 20 years ago by Brian Longboth. All these things, not only on the website, which I've given the police like a million cards. Mm -hmm. Here, help me. This is what's going on with the card of my website. Right. Um, but nothing. Nothing's. I'm imagining it. That's. But you're not, because it's hard fact evidence. Yeah. And now they're trying to cover it up, saying, well, it's because you're a public nuisance, so people are angry. But that's still not okay. If that were the case, correct, you right. know. So it's like, regardless of everything else, that there's no quote unquote like evidence of. You gave these are hardcore facts. The dog, the dog bite, the vandalism of the car. These are all crimes, and they're doing nothing about it. Correct. So, you and know, your, your opinion as to why? That's what I want to ask them. You know. Yeah. Truly, I would like. Well, to there I can tell you what they would tell you. They say Kevin's crazy and Kevin's a public nuisance and Kevin's imagining it and blah blah blah. And the same the things they've they've but that's tried to never directly say but had played the slugging game, right? Mm -hmm. People come up and ask me questions and then I'll start to tell them and then they'll go ballistic on me and attacking me and then they'll try to make me think that if someone thinks you're crazy, they're a dead man and that's how life is, right? It's like mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not right. how life is. No. <laughs> yeah, I would really like to Okay, so yeah, so have you ever heard if such a thing? Even if someone is a criminal. Okay, have you ever heard of such a thing if someone really is a criminal? So if someone, let's no. say someone supposedly killed someone, um, like they're saying to me, but let's say they're actually not a suspect, but they're a criminal. They have proof. Let's say, like for me, they don't, they're, they're, like I said, one of these thousands of accusations is that I supposedly killed someone, but there's no body, or and they've even taken my DNA. There's no body. There's no. There's no actual crime. There's just you killed someone. Just like you're crazy, but no why. You killed someone, but there's no body or crime scene. Right. 
Okay, let's say there is someone that actually has killed someone. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever heard of such a thing like this done to them? Like to such a wide, broad extent, all of everywhere? Correct. I mean, I know mm -hmm. there's, you I see mean, things in movies like on the, so-and-so kills someone, we have a, but have you ever seen, remember, I'm not told what I've done. Yeah. And you didn't do these things. Like no, but they never want confessions from me, right? They want mm -hmm. these coerced, false confessions. And of course, it jumps from thing to thing. But what I'm asking is, have you ever seen anything like this? Mm -hmm. Whether it's to a criminal or a suspect or... No. Right, no, you haven't. Mm -hmm. And neither have I. Right. I've never heard of anything. I've never seen anything anywhere in the world. Right. Um, that's, well, I'm assuming that's why it was so hard for you to fathom at first why it took you a long time to figure this. Well, because totally nothing's directly crap. said. You're watching a planet full of angry, enraged people yeah. for no reason, which I still walk around every day going, I don't understand. Each person I have any type of interaction with wants me dead, gone, removed from society, or killed, but there's no reasoning, just weird statements like, you know what you did. And you're like, but what did I do? But why no. can't I know? Right. And it's doesn't that strike thing. you as very strange? Yeah. I mean, I would be really scared. I, I would mean, be really, like, um, I'm easy all the time. Like, I just, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously yeah. you do, but it's just... And that's the entire concept of gang stalking, is to make someone look... Paranoid, and what is paranoid? I think something's going on, but it's not. Mm -hmm. um, and then try to uh, bring it out to the violence level to get me to hit someone or try to kill someone or threaten someone's life. Uh, even what Mike Huntley told me at 29, I can't remember the exact words, but he basically told me he wanted me to like, how do I say this? He said something like, he said something in context that, not directly, that he wanted me to threaten someone's life or something. Mm -hmm. As if it was all scripted out. Just weird for me. Right. Okay, but... Well, um, yeah, and then I was arrested for 422 criminal threat after calling the police and telling them that they needed to put a stop to these people doing these things, and then them turning mm -hmm. around on me. That's weird. That doesn't correct. make any type of sense. Anymore. And then telling me that, uh, for example, when they had Bailey Bernard attack me and try to block my gate and stop me from going in my house, mm -hmm. they said that I assault and battery them, turning them up, turning it around just like everything else. Right? Even though you didn't do anything to them. No, I just I tried to get away from him. And if I did break out after he hit the keys out of my hand mm -hmm. while blocking the gate, right. and of course me calling 911 first, but they don't care because... You're trying to get help. And correct, they and they won't help me, and then they go... Well, you're a violent, paranoid schizo, and you attack this guy. But how do they... Okay, first off, how do they know that I'm a violent, paranoid schizo? That's the first question. Right. Okay? How would they get that information? Because that would be illegal. They're yeah, acting illegally based correct. on a label or an opinion. But second of all, let's say I was a violent, paranoid schizo. Mm -hmm. And some guy attacked me. If you defend yourself. Correct, right? Does that make sense? Absolutely. So That's what I was going to say. Even if I part. was... And we could take the violin or whatever. Let's just say I was a paranoid schizo for... But you could throw the violin in there as well. But let's just say I was a paranoid schizo and someone attacks me and the police go, Well, you're, you're a violent paranoid schizo, so we're not going to help you. But how do they know? Right. How does, that, how does this one incident apply to that exactly. label or profile, right? Well, it one, doesn't. how would they know that about you, right? period. Two, you know, if that were the case, it has nothing to do with if somebody assaults you and you defend yourself. Yeah. So what they're doing is, just like my father and Mike Huntley said, told me, Kevin, you're not allowed to defend yourself. Literally, I'm not allowed to defend myself, even the First Amendment freedom of speech, or there will be harsh ramifications, um, which is very strange. Um, okay, so, do you think that I am capable of what Officer Dinsey claims while sending people like Victoria Walker after me and the endless others working the same angle since five years old. Um, Capable of hurting somebody? Is that what you mean? Um, well, okay. Um, yeah, capable of hurting. Violent paranoid schizo. Capable of hurting a danger to myself or others. Mm -hmm. And Dinsey's most recent claims that I've supposedly threatened to kill all Starbucks customers. His oh, older no. claims that I'm like the Vegas shooter or the Unabomber working with Victoria Walker. No, absolutely not. Okay, so You're five months after... Here's the thing, like 5150, like you said, it's if somebody's like a 
going to be a harm or could be a harm to themselves or somebody else. Like, no, there, you are not. Which is You're a temporary not. thing. A 5150 temporary is in a long term. No, there's no such thing as old. he's a long term crazy violent guy. No. Uh, law and violence is based on short term events. So a 5150, some guy flipped out and went crazy. Worst case scenario, they check him in for a temporary. He's out in three days and they extend it, which that's still only 14. So correct. So there's no real such thing like uh, Dinsey's Facebook account, which says forcing people into mental institutions. That's is institute um, institutional uh, institutionalization or yeah that's not that okay that putting people in institutions that he doesn't like or approve of no there has to be like solid ground for that yeah so and so to try to make Kevin look like he's a crazy ongoing public nuisance mm -hmm. is their agenda but the, the you've never been violent like violent no absolutely not like. If I thought that about you, I wouldn't be working with you. <laughs> you know, if I yeah. did not feel safe, like we sure wouldn't yeah. have been working together in therapy for like five months. Yeah. You know, so that's completely false. Yeah. And then some of their other claims are, I think I'm Jesus, and I think I'm the Messiah, no. and I think I'm a hero, and like the whole delusional, you delusional grandeur. You never said anything that would yeah. make me think you thought that ever. Yeah, but that's so. that's some of their tactics to try to push me to that point. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, I think I actually have already asked. Why do you think that they refuse to look at any of the proof or evidence of what is being done in my life? Well, we kind of go over that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you say passing out cards to these endless worldwide mass attackers, letting them know they've been lied to, is pretty justified in my self-defense? I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with you passing out your cards. What, um, I, what Lady of the Front Desk app told me to ask you, tell you is that in this building you can't pass out cards if you don't have an office here. So I was like, okay. Yeah, trying Makes to turn sense. it into some kind of Makes profession. Sense. So then that's, then I asked you, and you've been very respectful about that. Like, I haven't yeah. seen a single one of the, your cards yeah. in But I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about in general. No, I'm saying it's, it's worldwide. People, you're doing that, you're handing them a card, a business card. People yeah. do that every day. And the police are trying to say that I'm a public nuisance, and if people don't want my cards. And if that's the case, okay, but like you're not doing anything illegal, is what I'm saying. Like yeah. I've seen a public nuisance, like you've shown me photos of your truck with all the cars shoved in and yeah. like all that stuff. That's different. Yeah. You know, into your window so it won't go up and down. Like if people don't want your card, they don't have to take it. Correct. Although the police are trying to make up lies and unforcing cards on people as yeah. the next angle of theirs but that's not really i don't want to get into the police's actions because we know they're dug so deep in these 40-year operations they'll do anything to cover it up um including probably trying to gnaw off my <laughs> arms and legs with their mouths at that mm -hmm. but um um i'll just we'll just i'll restate the question just for the hell of it um would you say that passing out cars and these endless worldwide mass attackers, letting them know they've been lied to, is pretty justified? I know you already answered it, but just to reinforce. I think, yeah, you passing out cars is correct. totally. Like, First Amendment, these people yeah. won't leave me alone, they need to stop, stop stop pursuing me, stop following me, you've been lied to. All you're doing is, is pretty giving information. Yeah, correct. And so people cruise around with business cards. Um, here's a card, go to my dry cleaning business or whatever, and nobody cares. And their argument is, well, you pass out a lot of cards, but I met with person after person that wants me dead. Right. So you pass out a lot of cards, but here's the thing, like, they want you to stop passing them out, right? Correct. But are you ever going to? Um, if the attack stops, sure. Okay. So it's like... I will, uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you in the video, whatever. I will never stop speaking out right. about the last 42 years of my life. Right. That's but I don't want to have to exert the energy of physically passing out cards. Like you've said. And it's yeah. all been in self defense. Example, um, let's say I go to the restaurant down there and 15 people show up in black pants and white shirts, mm -hmm. and every person in the place mimics my Twitter, Facebook, or other conversations. In self-defense, I hand them a card. This is the truth because you're taking turns in anger and rage on me, and yeah. something needs to stop. You want to stop that. Correct. Behind it. You don't so want to have to be doing. 
Correct. So if I don't have to physically pass out cards, hand people cards, whatever, that's great. Now, is the website coming down and what oh, the, I'm not saying the 42 years of crimes against me? No. People have the right to actively seek out the truth and read about it. Right. And that's why the police were so mad when I was writing books. And have there been complaints about your website, too? From the they, they keep website? switching different angles. People play this game like, um, well, the website's doing something to my computer. I mean, just the most obscene thing. I'm like, okay. well, you know, what is it? Or, or, or like monsters coming out of the screen or something? You know? Right, yeah. And then they jump to, or do pop up ads? Well, who asked that? Nobody will ask that. Right. And here, go to my website. There's information about this stuff. Are there pop up ads? Come on, people don't. People right. don't how many people do you know talk like that? They don't, right? Unless they're like the super paranoid. I, <laughs> I don't know. So they're trying to sort of turn things around and get me to say something about this website's evil and it's a scam and this and that. But it's just text, photos, videos, and information like the rest of totally. every website out there, every news channel out there, whatever. The only difference is we don't want you talking. Mm -hmm. um, so what? Go ahead. No, let's finish the yeah. list. Um, do you know of anyone that would actually sit around ignoring something like this being done to them? No. I mean, if this was, you know, every day being done to me, I would, well, I'd be a process to it. I would be miserable, terrified, didn't know what to do, would try and get help, go to the police like you have, you know? Yeah, um, but, but you couldn't ignore it, that's what... No, I mean, like you described, like, you can't because it's like a cattle prod every yeah. day. Yeah, so let's say you go to a coffee shop or a restaurant and people start showing up doing this to you, mm -hmm. and this happens every single place you go, all day, night, 24-7. Yeah, and you've said, like... What like would you, what would you do? I guess I should add, I mean... I what mean, I, well, like you You can't ignore it, you just said you can't ignore it, right? I would try to, probably, like, oh, no, I'm, no, that's not it, blah, 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 whatever, yeah. but if it kept happening and happening, like, like you've said, you've tried to, like, ignore yeah. it, but you can't. It's, it's like if someone thing. keeps giving you a dead arm over and over every few seconds, and this goes for like 40 years, right. okay? You're saying, okay, stop, okay, leave me alone, okay? You can, you can stop now, okay, I get it, it's funny, but stop, mm -hmm. okay? Enough's enough, okay? Stop, and then you start getting away from them and they keep following you, okay? Stop, but in my case, it's not the same guy. It goes from stranger to stranger so they can mask it, right? right? So what do you think their agenda is? I mean, you That's yourself say, question. you yourself are saying, with a psychology degree, that you could not ignore it. I don't think any person no, who's a human if, being can. If anyone is being just, like, tortured or, like, somebody's coming after them every single day, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no way to ignore it. Yeah, so what do you think you would do? You can't really know. I would try and get help. I would try and, like, make it stop, you know? And I think that's what you're doing because you said yeah. information is and like you have. I, I'm not. I don't want to put you on the okay. on the rail here because I know you can't really answer the question. But how do you think you would get help? I mean, what would you do? What you're, you know, like going to the police and telling them. And they and say we're not going to help you. I honestly don't know. But that's well, my. You just answer. sort of try to think about what, what would you. You can't ignore it. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you next? trying to get people to help me, like to like see, understand to understand. understand. Yeah, to understand. Okay, so there you yeah, go, absolutely. right? Okay, so that is, so what, what you're saying is that what's called, in gang stalking is actually called normalizing, letting people understand and know, um, to try to normalize the situation back to normal so that people understand that, oh, you know, this is what's really going on, which is very difficult. Um, and it's not like a sure thing, because remember, gang stalking is the very select few, and this isn't even the term gang stalking is a very unofficial term uh, because it's so rare. Community harassment groups, uh, cause stalking, gang stalking, um, this, these aren't official terms, right? And so um, you yourself has just said, I can't ignore it, so you got to let people know what's going on, mm -hmm. except in my case, it's you don't talk or we kill you. And if we're not talking one person, we're talking we're a what? Right. Um, so, okay, go ahead, sorry. Okay. Okay, lead, lead officer Dancy is running around making claims that I am the next Vegas shooter, leader bomber, and has now filed police reports 
uh, with Starbucks employees, um, with Topanga Division LAPD, working with Starbucks employees to cover up the mass crime spree he is involved in against me. Um, do I seem like someone that would try to kill star all Starbucks customers, or any for that matter? And what do you think about lead officer Sean Dinsey? No, you absolutely are not somebody that would try to kill all Starbucks customers or anybody. I've not seen a violent tendency at all. Zero. Like I have, I don't feel that way at all. Okay. Truly, like in my whatever clinical opinion, whatever it is, you're not. You're a very kind person, and you've done nothing of the violent nature at all. You've actually tried to protect people like when you were younger. Yeah. Me about that. yeah. So, like um, Greg Wall, my brother's trying to bash Greg Wall. Yeah. yeah. And but that you got in the middle and tried to yeah. stop that from Now, their happening. argument is that at 29, I snapped. I'm a crazy man. Right. Um, and for a while, like, you questioned yourself. Like you said, like, you didn't know what the fuck was going well, on. Well, I didn't like question myself. I questioned the situation. Correct. What was happening yeah, to you. Like, yeah. Like, I can't believe I'm seeing this. But I never questioned. Am I a crazy guy? No, right. <laughs> like the si like you said, the situation you were willing to kind of like yeah, like it's a hard, it's a difficult on. situation for anyone to grasp. Absolutely. And I don't care if someone's sitting there uh, fantasizing as if it happened to them and how they would react. There's a difference between fantasizing about something that isn't going on yeah. versus how what's going to happen when it actually happens yeah. to you. You never know. Um, yeah. Now, I'm going to have a surprise for you next week. I actually have video footage of the incident where um, Starbucks employees have called LAPD claiming I threatened to kill all Starbucks customers, and you're going to get to see the event okay. on video showing I haven't threatened anything at all, and they got mad because I have their mass mobbings on video, and they found out mm -hmm. that they're on video doing it. Right. So they called the Dinsey crew okay. at the Panga Division. Did they come? They didn't come out. Uh, that was some of the things they probably wanted to ask me questions, but according to my attorney, Seymour Amster, um, the Starbucks employee, remember, Dinsey has broken on my property after the break-in attempts, dropping thug letters mm -hmm. with Starbucks. Um, mm -hmm. Whether they're real or not, we don't know, because Dinsey's a complete nut job. Um, but, um, and by the way, that violates all boundaries because police officers don't generally hop fences to right. drop thug paperwork from, from coffee shop corporations on you. But anyways, um, without getting too sidetracked, um, because they found out I had an entire two days linked with multiple Starbucks locations and then each employee going man to me, that's one of the tags, mm -hmm. hey man, how are you? How are you? Are you having a good night tonight, man? Um, and me narrating in the camera. See, I just went to this Starbucks, and I think I went to four different Starbucks in one night, simply walked in, bought a coffee, walked out, mm -hmm. and each one said, hey, man, this, hey, man, that. And I narrated in the camera. Um, you see, they just did it at this location, along mm -hmm. with all the other things. And when I walked out, the girl picked up the phone, making claims that I threatened to call all the Yeah, um, that didn't happen. Correct. So you're going to see that next week. Uh, okay, so what do you think of the reasoning? What do you think the reasoning is the police refuse to be honest and healthy? I think I've had that question like 15 times mm -hmm. in the year, but um, actually, we, I think we jumped. That question was meant for the end, but we talked about it. Okay, what is your opinion of lead officer Sean Dinsey and he is doing and is involved in? I would really like to talk to him and see what he has to say. And I would like to ask, like, why nothing's been done to keep you safe? Well, because remember, Dinsey's a good guy for the community. He's cleaning up the community. Mm -hmm. And so he has his neighborhood watch groups, blah, blah, blah. And he's just creating a good, clean, healthy community of perfection. So, so what about, that's something I want to ask you, too. Like, what, what do you want to happen? Like, what could happen that would make it better? Like, you better. Like, what would you like to see Dinsey do or whoever else? Like, so... Well, first of all, when we talk about my opinion of Dinsey, which is a very accurate opinion, is that man should not be near any job with power. Mm -hmm. And technically, he shouldn't be around any job. But, um, he is corrupt criminal slime, preying off the weak to get to the top. Hence, now in politics, running for city council, District 12. Mm -hmm. By going after 
good people that could possibly have problems, could possibly suffer from mental illness, might be homeless, might be an eyesore. Mm -hmm. Remember, Dinsey is here to clean up the streets. But what is Dinsey's definition of cleaning up the streets? Mm -hmm. Eradicate all imperfection. Okay? Um, you've seen set up operations of the Dinsey Neighborhood Stalking Watch crew going after the homeless while trying to set me up. Mm -hmm. That lady in the restaurant. Yeah, like make me part of their mob or gang, right? Yeah, but to get you involved. Okay, well think about it. What did the homeless guy do? He might okay. smell, he might he have ripped clothing, he might... He but that. what did he do, right? Yeah, nothing that I saw. Yeah, and then I think about it, I think there was a different person on his Facebook account, he mentions a lady who's homeless that goes in and fixes her makeup. But what did she do? It's not a crime to go into a bathroom and fix your makeup because you don't have a house. Unless she was or stealing throw something. Throw some water on your face. I don't know. Because unless she's stealing something from other people that are in there and taking their makeup, like she didn't nothing wrong. No, no. His, his Facebook account. Remember, Dinsey also states on his Facebook that he's going after people that have parties or oh, yeah. preventing people that could, in the future, from having parties and stop the party crime before it happened, but there's no such crime in having a party. Right. There's noise disturbances. I have a party and it's loud and the neighbor gets angry, so the cops are called and the cop comes out. Listen, your neighbors are complaining. Can you shut it right. down? Sure, okay. But there's but a party itself is not illegal. People have parties no, all the time. All the time. Okay. okay. So, but to understand Dinsey's thought process, he thinks parties are crimes. He thinks mental illness uh, people shouldn't be roaming the earth. He thinks the homeless shouldn't be roaming the earth. Um, he thinks he's big into the pre-crime, right? Um, uh, profiling. Um, that guy's crazy, so he could be the next Vegas shooter. That guy, when he was 29, according to my family, had a mental break, but that's not what really happened. But whether it is or isn't is irrelevant mm -hmm. to Dinsey's actions. Okay, so some, first of all, I'm 47, so what does that have to do with 29? Okay, so what do you do? You run around. Well, you see that 47 year old? When he's 29, he had a mental break, so we gotta remove him from society because he could possibly be the next Vegas shooter. It doesn't make sense from a rational, sane person. No. Okay, so when I say, or more importantly, when Dinsey says he's here to create clean, healthy communities and clean up the streets, his definition mm -hmm. of cleaning up the streets is kind of like Adolf Hitler's definition of cleaning off cleaning up Germany in 1940 mm -hmm. and the definition of neighborhood watch groups isn't follow someone around all over the entire pl pl planet provoking them with threat after threat we're watching you and you better not say anything or we'll kill you has nothing to do with neighborhood watch groups. A neighborhood watch group is simply a concerned set of individuals. Mm -hmm. If they see something weird, they call the cops. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what Dinsey is doing is riling up these masses to go after people, trying to make them feel important, like they're special and police officers. And who knows, maybe he's targeting the lonely, divorced housewife or something and saying, I can make you feel, he's not gonna word it this way, I'm going to make you feel important and help me uh, stop crime and this and that. Mm -hmm. But like we said before, it's illegal for a citizen to try to stop crime. Right. Yeah, I mean, I know nothing about the law, but like what you're saying makes sense, you know? Cause it's they're simple. Not a, they're not a police it's simple. Um, the training. Um, Brittany, I'm a police officer. <laughs> Look, I have a pretty badge, whether I do or, or not. Or not, it doesn't even matter. Um, so that guy over there killed someone, so I want you to kill them. I'd be like, okay. huh? Like, and you what say, I'd what's your answer? I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, no. Okay, you good. Know? That's the correct answer. Yeah. But these I'm people are actually choosing the opposite. Okay, so this is kind of day two of um, my interview with Brittany Henderson. Um, and we're just finishing up some questions. Um, that we ran out of time and wanted to talk about or I want to talk about with Brittany um, So let's get started um, And I first thing I wanted to do with Brittany was expand and this is something we probably should have mentioned in the beginning But I wanted to expand and you sort of asked 
expand on the tactics, the specific things that are being done to me because without really having that basis, mm -hmm. I don't think people understand. Sure, you could say gang stalking and I'm being stalked and people are following me, but that doesn't really um, hammer in the, the specific details of the kind of unheard of tactics. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just, I'm not gonna rattle them off because they're all of them off because they're in the thousands. But I'll rattle off some of the tactics and you can sort of multiply that by thousands to understand that not only is this worldwide, um, by almost every person I'm in contact with worldwide, instantly notified to take part um, in doing these things, um, you can sort of derive from some of the ones I'm going to talk about and apply them to other things. Okay, so um, first I wanted to just mention a few, I'll just, a few that come in my head. The first. The first one is whistling. Random strangers will walk by me and they'll whistle. Mm -hmm. No matter where I go, uh, where wide, and I used to test the waters and go down to Oxnard or um, Hollywood, Oxnard, I would drive Laguna, San Diego, and person after person would walk by and whistle at me like 40 times a day, literally. Um, there is, which you mentioned in the last, the other day, is, um, the car honking the horns or pushing the alarm button two or three times mm -hmm. when I'm around. Um, and, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Just so, I mean, people could say that it's coincidence or whatever, but just if you could tell the difference, you know, like how you know it's not. Yeah. Okay. So I know, I know it's not coincidence because, um, an example, one, just as this is, remember, first of all, when this started within one week, probably shorter, it went worldwide, wherever I went, mm -hmm. and I'd test the waters, but um, one parking a lot alone, um, Woodland Hills, Victory, and Canoga, uh, by a Starbucks and a 24-hour fitness, which is a huge lot, there's probably like 10,000 cars or something, just huge. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a Jamba there and sat there for like 40 minutes and I think I probably went into a Starbucks, got a coffee and walked around. I went to a Togo's there um, and then I started passing out cards to people because they wouldn't stop provoking me but literally recorded on audio and video I would guesstimate at least 500 honks two or three times in patterns um, for people getting out of their cars and parking or coming to their cars. Beep, beep or beep 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 one sequentially after the next and then I might go downtown t downtown LA and video some of the car patterns and people see me and they start doing it there too um, and they start passing out cards and people see me pass out cards and they get angrier and they do it more because we don't want you talking all right mm -hmm. um, so we're not talking in one month's time I heard it twice yeah. we're talking in one or two hours 500 times literally and every parking lot I go to where why beep 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 even getting out of the car coming in here this morning uh, I think probably two of them in about less than 10 minutes right mm -hmm. um, which is where you heard it the other day right. outside out front here right. um, and this all starts when does this start because one time I got out of my car and I pushed my alarm button mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure if it was armed so I pushed it again and my car alarm honked the horn because the car alarm honks the horn right. and it honks the horn twice and they go oh well Kevin committed another imperfection crime the entire planet is told to now do it for the rest of his life um, so I didn't know that but that's yeah that so there are some of them are mimic tactics and some of them are actually we think he did this so they're mimic tactics right mm -hmm. and it put, gets put in what they call their laundry list which a man named Brian Longbotham which I worked for at Universal Studios a modern video film who was sent after me um, using the Universal Studios corporate dollars to hunt me so you understand the ramifications of the people involved in the entertainment industry with billions of dollars sent after me, or I should say turned against me, to hunt me down, to try to uh, frame me or set me up in front of them to make it look 
like I'm doing these things to people. Um, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but from that, no, I just no that's okay it was because to yeah, because I'll start to get into specific details. But that's a good. I'm glad you asked that because now I can sort of expand out. Now that they understand the basis, mm -hmm. Aubrey Fisher, for example, um, a girl sent after me associated with Rody Morales, working with the LAPD to take me to strip clubs and try to make it look like I was stalking and hunting strippers and porn stars. Um, who introduced me to Aubrey Fisher, who was mad at me for getting into studio photography, um, which doesn't make much sense. Um, I tapped my foot around her when she wanted me to help her with some of her studio shoots, and she got angry that I tapped my foot around here, uh, around her, and that got put into the laundry list of things to clean me up or confess to, um, to give false confessions. Um, for six years, something like six years, uh, anyone that saw me anywhere, uh, LAX airport, uh, airports in New York, airports in Florida, um, walking around Florida, walking around Vegas, whatever, coffee shops worldwide would, not just Starbucks, Starbucks, any coffee shop, would see me and start tapping their foot or tapping on the counter. Starbucks employees would say, this is how much it is, and start tapping cards on counters, things like that. Um, or strangers behind me would start tapping or they would start tapping against the wall to hint we know what you did and we're going to guilt you to death even though I didn't do it but let's theoretically say I was kind of an asshole to Aubrey one time in my life that still wouldn't justify worldwide mobbings to hunt down and eradicate someone over tapping tapping your foot by someone okay so so once again, the mimics, right, we're going to tap you to death, if that makes sense. Okay, um, other ones, the cars, 90% of cars and parking lots before 2011, um, all parked forwards, not all of them, but most of them, all parked forwards, and after I parked backward one, once at an Encino Starbucks, now about 40% of parking lots, cars are parked backwards. Now that's hard to sort of analyze and understand if you're not watching the change, mm -hmm. but what is obvious is the twos and threes groupings in every lot all across the world of cars backwards together, um, which is blatantly obvious and anyone analyzing that can say that is not normal. Um, other things, uh, people now follow me, waiting in cars, watching me. Example, last night I went out to take a walk. About seven or eight cars showed up within ten minutes. People sitting in the cars watching me to try to provoke me. We're watching you with the police death threats on video. We're watching you. Um, and Dincy's neighborhood watch groups. Um, another one is people waiting in cars backwards with lights on in large groups got tons of video of that mm -hmm. and you'll notice I might drive into a parking lot everything's normal and within 10 minutes people either see me and reverse their cars and turn on the lights or people show up doing these things mm -hmm. um, this is this is a, a good example at 29 when I didn't really comprehend what was going on uh, I would go into coffee shops and buy something and they would grab the credit card and they'd tap it twice on the counter okay. and then um, to test the waters, I went down to Laguna Beach to a coffee bean or San Diego, Oceanside, uh, then the other way. Each and every place in sequence grabbed the credit card and tapped it twice. Little suggestive messages like we know you but we don't know you to try to create paranoia. Mm -hmm. um, now remember these are in the... Th oh then I'll, before I... I'll, I'm about to end this excerpt or whatever but then there's the the verbal conversations like uh, within the last year and a half everyone most of the people I talk to say man in the sentence either around me or direct at me like oh hey Kevin how you doing man oh man it's a good day man this and it goes especially around my house to each and every single person every Starbucks employee every coffee bean employee man 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 in repetition and the reason I'm sure you know, is if 
a group of people go, I don't know you, but they keep saying man 100,000 times a day, it's going to put you in a hypersensitive state once you pick up on it. And eventually, if they never stop, which remember, this has been going on all day and night 24-7 for 18 years, um, the motive, and it starts actually at five years old. With I was just going to ask you if it was before that, but that's um, when you started. It, it was, but they were different tactics. Okay. Uh, and they, the tactics change and grow. So they try to find weakness, and the tactics change and grow to exploit weakness, if that makes sense. Um, so they want that reaction with the police and people like Sean Dincy to say Kevin's a violent, paranoid, schizo. We need to remove him from society. Um, you know, we could question the whys all day and night, but nothing's going to be justified. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so, and on that note, not only the man, but it goes through all sorts of personal conversation and social network tweets, but taking things from my sentences and using it in their sentences over and over, like perfect 100,000 times a day or all righty. I'm jo I joke about Jim Carrey. I think I mentioned all righty then and then everywhere I go, people go all righty 100 times a day. to try to sort of guilt and mimic me into a reaction. Okay, so now I don't want to go, remember, amplify that times a thousand and you'll understand. Mm -hmm. And worldwide, you'll understand what's going on. Okay, so uh, those are the tactics. And now one of the things I kind of wanted to expand on was w you quickly mentioned um, taking pictures of people. And I think that's an important topic because Officer Toro shows up at Encino Starbucks saying, if you ever take a picture of a person, I will exercise the law in my own way. Mm -hmm. I don't think his real name's Officer Toro because he freely gave it to me, hinting about people sent out for me in Southern Oregon State College, but that's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, he was wearing a badge. Um, with a group of police officers in a car. Um, so, I guess, uh, do you have any input on anything you want to bring up? or Is he the officer who asked for his badge number? No, that was Jensen a little bit around the same time. I think Jensen was right before that. Okay. Um, and the taking pictures of people... Um, was that like in a specific place or wh what um, was that? Well, there's a certain progression. See, I, I got into photography to create art. Yeah. Obviously, I've Aubrey Fisher got mad that I was getting into studio photography. Now, this is a, we're not going to have time to go into these, the reasoning, their reasonings, that they don't want me into studio photography or Mike Wexler was sent after me in 1996 taking a, a film photography class, mm -hmm. which is very strange that um, they don't want me having any piece of equipment on me that can basically capture my surroundings on a film plane or now a CMOS sensor. Because if I go out and take pictures, there's so many people taking turns on me that the people in the frame whether I'm directly taking their picture or they just happen to be in the frame, like if you're at Disneyland and you take a picture of your friend and there's a hundred people in the background, right. um, which clearly isn't illegal, um, there's going to be accessories to murder, which let's let's talk call this what it is. It's an extermination campaign, and so the police don't want me having any proof or anything that I could ever use to defend myself saying, look, this is what's going on. Hence, we're not going to allow you every single, the 10 terabytes of information you have, the endless death threats on a video, it's all inadmissible as evidence. Yeah, sure, okay, right. Um, um, that's okay, <laughs> that made sense to me. I was wondering why they would say taking photos, you couldn't take photos because that's Correct. not illegal, that's, you're not doing Correct. anything wrong. I've seen your artwork, which is amazing, you know, so. Okay. Yeah. No, so, so what happens? I, I kind of got sidetracked. What happens is, I buy a camera, they flip out before it, before it even arrives in the mail. They flip out. Okay. They don't want it. And then maybe I go out and I want to learn the camera. So maybe I go to a coffee shop and I have an instruction manual, and people start showing up asking me all these questions, like these interrogation questions. Are you a photographer? You know, you're not allowed to have a camera if you're not a photographer. Just the weirdest things, right? Right. Um, trying to make me think that I'm doing something wrong. Okay. 
Uh, I even had a guy, I think last night or the night before, ask me if I was a photographer to try to intimidate me, right? Okay. Well, what does it matter if I'm a photographer or not? I'm allowed to have a camera. You, nobody yeah. cares. And you can tell, like, <laughs> by the way that he asked you that it wasn't just, like, a question. Oh, yeah, by the clothes. Like, for example, he's wearing camos, which is one of the tactics in groups. He mm -hmm. pulls up in a white car with a black hood, and a, um, about 50 yards down the street, someone pulls up another white car with a black fender at the same exact time okay. a girl walks out a couple minutes before that of my complex walking dog with black pants and a white shirt you mentioned last time about you've seen the black and whites yeah. okay That's so you can see all these things going around happening with these group coordinated groups and then he's asking interrogating questions that nobody could care less about okay and the truth be told, we all have cameras. We all have cell phones yeah. with cameras. So we're all photographers, and we, we're all taking pictures. If you really want to think like they do, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it doesn't even matter, right? There's no, there's no argument here, right? Um, yeah, you're doing nothing wrong. Nobody you. says you have to be a make five hundred thousand a year to have a camera in photography. You can right. be a hobbyist. It doesn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, needless to say. What happens is, I get the camera, they get angry, the attacks get larger and larger, and then what are you going to do? Well, if people don't leave you alone, you're going to start either videoing the incident or taking pictures to show, look, these people are hunting me, right? Look what's going on. And then you're going to do what I did, is you're going to go to the police. Mm -hmm. And you go, look, look what's going on. I'm being hunted. I'm being stalked. And in my case, the police, because their accessories to murder, going, you can't take pictures of people and this and that. Whoa, wait a minute. How do you do your investigations? You know? You know? Right. <laughs> I think that's like a good point, too, just because if anyone is thinking you're taking pictures of people specifically or whatever, that's not the case. You're taking pictures of the surroundings and, like, you're not doing anything. Yeah, or, or sometimes the actual people, if in groupings, like if a um, hundred people show up in uh, 30 minutes wearing black pants and red shirt, yeah. I take those pictures to show, look what's going on. And then they, to cover up the crimes, mm -hmm. say Kevin is a pervert and he's following me trying to take my picture. That's what I'm trying or to get Or Kevin is this. But at no point am I actually getting into people's faces or this or that. You're right? taking the photos of people specifically to do anything with those photos specifically. You're just correct. They're they're, they're just evidence of a crime. Okay, that's what that, I'm that's what to they are. But this. they know that. That's the point. I know. I yeah. just want to like yeah. say it again because like because on here too, like people are trying to say things about you that aren't true. You know, like that yeah. you're a pervert or whatever it may yeah. be, and that's not the case. Yeah, like let me. I'll, I'll give you the just one of these pervert examples. Uh, the uh, Topanga Gateway Plaza, which they've been working on me for over 20 years for the crime in 2001 of walking in and buying a coffee at Topanga Starbucks. 2001, right around 29. Okay. They started it on me. Uh, remember, John Paul Naranjo that they had hit my hit me in the back of the head seven times. That was around 2009 or something. Okay. Um, that, yeah. Okay, so there's a good 10 years or nine years of all day and night attacks mm -hmm. before it escalates to them physically attacking. The, right? They're, they're mentally attacking me for a good nine or 10 years, and then they break. We can't set Kevin up, so they turn into physical attacks on their what, part. What happened that day? Because I remember seeing a video of that, the guy, the security guy at Starbucks with the other employee. And then later um, after that is when he attacked you, right? Yeah, without going too deep, the, the employee was gay, okay. which links back to a gay person they sent after me at University of Colorado that they're trying to cover up. Um, and they were mad at me because he kind of snuck in my room when I was sleeping and he asked me what I was thinking and flirting with me. I was a little shy and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like 23 years old, I don't know. And... Um, I don't do anything mean to the guy, but I get a little nervous, and I walk out of the room, I go to my roommates, and I go, oh, that guy just asked me, yeah, I think he's gay, whatever, whatever. But I, I'm not gay, and that was it, and he felt alienated. And these are perfectly normal college situations. I didn't run up and go, you gay guy, and bash his skull in with a crowbar or anything, no, right? No, I just, it just didn't work that. out, right? And I'm not gay. But after that, they were telling everyone worldwide, or at least 
this was before the internet, so at least citywide, mm -hmm. did I am a homophobe that hates gays, I'm doing all these things to gays. Okay. And that links to a Starbucks, that gay Starbucks employee in a different state 20 years later and links to another gay Starbucks employee at Victory and Canoga all coming after me in the Kevin hates gay people tactic. Remember once again these tactics jump from thing to thing all day. Um, just like the video I'm gonna show you, we have a Starbucks employee, the one saying that I supposedly threatened to kill all Starbucks customers is making references that I supposedly now scared people um, hanging turns in my car or something trying to scare them with my car. Right, okay. so you can see how it's jumping from gay to car to masturbation to this, right, and just going from thing to thing, like in the thousands, right, and it's all on video, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not one thing, why do they keep jumping from thing to thing? Right. Okay, so, um, yeah, so the Gateway Plaza parking lot with the Starbucks, um, I mentioned I mentioned earlier the lights on backwards, the cars in pairs backwards, the identical cars, the people watching me turning on their lights. So I go and I video what's going on. Yeah. And they get mad. And they say. And like one girl in a yellow X Tierra, which actually I think lives in the Met, or if she actually, there's another identical car guy that lives in the Met, which is also stalking me with the identical car. Mm -hmm. And. Um, she runs up to my car with a camera. He's a pervert. He's taking my pictures, blah, blah, blah. As if, oh, and she's one of the people waiting backwards with the lights on, showing that she's taking part. So she gets caught sort of taking part, but then she probably says, you know, oh shit, what do I do? Now I'm videoed, an accessory to murder. So she has to cover it up. So she runs up all on video with her cell phone videoing me as if I care because I couldn't care less. Right. Uh, I have nothing to hide. And so, um, He's a pervert, he's taking my picture while videoing me, and it's like... And then I just, you know, nicely drive away, and they follow me, showing their anger and rage, how they follow me from place to place around the lot, just like you saw the security guard. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And everyone's always mad at me for defending myself, which is a situation I shouldn't have to be in in the first place. Right. Because the police are supposed to stop these things, but the police are telling them to do it. Did that just happen with the girl? Or no, was that, that was maybe a year and a half ago. Okay. Yeah, but these are like daily incidences for me because mm -hmm. uh, the common problem or the, the main issue is that nobody thinks this is wrong, just like all the people in Adolf Hitler's resume didn't think killing Jews and minorities were wrong, which most normal sane people will sit there and they'll like question and fathom it, like how could that be? Right. But it happened. Yeah. Just like... Uh, Romans kill Jews and whatever, right? <laughs> it's like, right, any <laughs> I mean, genocide. yeah, yeah I mean, awful. mass genocide based on different races and cultures have gone on throughout our entire existence in humanity. Mm -hmm. And while this is really unexplainable because it's literally a planet against one person at this point, is totally whew, unheard of. It's like, what the hell? But. It is what it is. Okay, so um, that's why they don't want me having a camera. That's why they don't want proof of the situations. And all I really did was want to go out and create art. Uh, photo shoots on right. green screens with models doing 3D visual effect backgrounds, which is what I started, which uh, everyone got angry, apparently, especially my family, not directly. But um, we don't want Kevin doing this, which is completely harmless. Right. And everyone else is doing it, <laughs> right? And your art, I've seen your art, you know, it's good. Yeah, too. thank you. I mean, I, I sort of felt like I was getting into the, I'm starting to feel comfortable. Yeah. And more importantly, comfortable learning how to pose people, because that's really difficult for me. Mm -hmm. um, and combining it all, but like everything else in my life, it's all sabotage right from day one. Um, okay, so... Starbucks and everyone else is trying to say that I'm a pub. Oh, yeah. So Starbucks and everyone else is trying to say that I'm a public nuisance, right. especially Dincy in the judicial system, mm -hmm. to cover this all up. Right. So, who have they said this to? You, like that you're a public nuisance, or who says that to you? Like uh, well, that was some of the actual the judicial charges because. Okay. Um, 
hey, Kevin, you won't stop passing out cards, and then they make up the lies. You're forcing cards on people. Okay. Right. I've never forced a card on people, and all, all those incidences are on video, and half those incidences are all setup attempts by them on video, which my lawyer has seen, and nobody sits there and goes, this is wrong. They keep lying, going and trying to force cards on people. But nowhere have I. No, and here's the <laughs> thing. Like, if someone, like, I've seen even in this building, if somebody asks you to not put the cards in the building or whatever, like, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's not like you're forcing them. Yeah, but then they'll play these crazy games. Like, um, I might hand someone a card, mm -hmm. and then I'll walk away, and then they'll go, and they'll follow me, and they'll go, I don't want your card. Okay. They try to force it on me, mm -hmm. and if I put me in a position like if I don't take the card back, I forced it on. Like weird things that don't make any sense. Okay. Or Elsie Sandoval from my father's office. I start passing out cards like you do flyers on cars. So she's running around literally and remember this information goes worldwide right. with the police saying that I'm somehow trying to jam people's windows shut with cards. Which if, if anyone has, has the common sense of a 10 year old, what makes more sense? You're trying to get people to stop attacking you? Mm -hmm. Or you're you just had an epiphany that today I'm gonna wake up and jam people's windows with cards that says I'm a target and people won't stop attacking me. Right. I mean let's I mean, let's I've be realistic here. I've seen a picture <laughs> of your vehicle with cards jammed yeah. in it, but I've never seen you do anything like that. Yeah. So 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 but they were doing Yeah, that. and so all these arguments are similar to that weird reversed mm -hmm. thing. And then we actually have women that actually Working with the police have hit, slapped me and tried to force cards on me, and the police don't care, right? It's like, okay. actually has done it, but they don't care because they're w all working with the police. And, of course, when she heard Dinsey's name, that's when she flipped out, showing that she was like a, a Nazi. Who is this? Person? It was some random girl at a Starbucks mm -hmm. on um, Canoga and Oxnard. Okay. Recently? Um, about a year ago. Okay. It's on video. I never had a chance to edit it. Oh, and then of course the Starbucks employees say I hit her. And I go, well, it's all on video. And then mm -hmm. they get angry, of course, and they ramble their attacks, right? <laughs> I mean, one thing I know about you is that you would never do that. You would never hurt somebody physically, ever. I don't have a like, reason to. I mean, no, unless, unless, unless it's in self-defense, right. like Bailey Bernard, where he followed me home and already had assault and batteried me. He's laying his shoulder in me. He's following me for 30 yards, screaming at the top of his lungs with a camera in my head. Mm -hmm. He's blocking his body against the gate, refusing to let me get away. Uh, I'm put, trying to put the key in. He's slapping the key out. Okay, and it breaks up in a fight. And the only thing that Topanga Division, LAPD care with Shapiro and Detective Angela Stewart and Dinsey and all the, the whole whatever Jew hate crew, I don't know what to call them, is that... Um, Kevin, did you or did you not hit a person? Well, yeah, I hit a person. Okay, well, that, you're arrested for battery. In defense. Wait. You wait, wait, well, what about him? Did, did he hit me? It doesn't matter. Right. Who was the one that called first? Me. Who was the one that came down the, went down the station? Me. Doesn't matter. All we want to know is did you touch a person? We don't care. What happened? If we don't care if someone's running around with uh, machetes chopping your limbs off. After he's hacked off ten, 10 of your limbs, mm -hmm. um, if you touched, if you if you went like this to him, we're gonna arrest you. Well, that's pretty strange, and it's all on video and photos and this that. We don't want the video. No, you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why don't you? Never like unprovoked. <laughs> the only time that you've ever done anything like you said, like when you defended yourself with the guy who hit you seven times in the head, right? Uh huh. And then when somebody was like coming at you, attacking you, not letting you into your home. You're going to defend yourself. That's like a normal human being. Yeah. yeah. And, and so you never start or instigate any type of physical altercation. Correct. Yeah. I, I have no reason to. I'm about positivity, accomplishments, yeah. uh, doing things with my life, making shitloads of money, thinking big, and helping everyone else in my path make money in a non-greedy way. Because that's who I am, and being creative and building things. And that, that's kind of my foundation is creative and building things, and whether it's building a creative business or art or whatever, and accomplishments and a legacy based on these types of things. That's who I am, but someone's really mad about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone does not sense. want that to happen. Yeah, which doesn't make sense. Yeah, okay, but so let's see. I know you, we okay, have Okay, so, so we... 
I think we have what a half an hour or so. Mm -hmm. Okay, still. Uh, okay, so how could the police not know about the gang stalking terror tactics done to me when you yourself see it instantly within minutes of walking outside your office door, um, all the way out here in Thousand Oaks, and I live in Woodland Hills. Right. Right. Where? I mean, you see it in minutes. Mm -hmm. And when you saw it, more importantly, when you saw it on video, you didn't sit there and play the the moron games that I have from so many people. Like, I just, I kind of sort of see, but no, you, I don't. I, mean, like, I see what you're talking about exactly. Yeah. I see it, what's going on. And yeah. So, um, so police officers and detectives who are trained, mm -hmm. maybe not necessarily in gang stalking, but trained see if something out of the norm is going on and lizard tails on yeah. welcome at seven slash tires uh um, your car's vandalized new keyings cars. top slashings um thousands of cards and cracks per day bitch written on the car baggage written on the car spit on the car for years kitty litter, kitty litter with shit on the car with notes merry christmas uh, I have like thousands of these photos, right, across right. like a ten-year period, um, and those are, and like they can't put the pieces together. <laughs> and you went to the police for those, right? Because those are like yeah. acts of vandalism. It was kind of on and off. Like there's a point where they just won't help me. I mean, at, there's, at the very beginning, mm -hmm. at first I was terrified. Like, what do I say to them? Right. So I didn't instantly go there. I started hiring private investigators. Mm -hmm. And I could tell that the private investigators knew who I was, and they were stealing my money and belittling me. Okay. And this still goes on today. Now that I know exactly what's going on, except now it's different because now when I talk to them on the phone or email them, they know they can't pull uh, the wool over my eyes with the bullshit, and I'll just flat out give them video proof, and they'll instantly change from "I'm trying to control you, Kevin," to "Oh shit." Now I'm going to try to either thug you or I'm going to bolt the other way or something. Uh, I, I have all sorts of freaky setup operations with pre uh, private, I guess, uh, private investigators like Empire trying to set me up for cover-up operations for a girl named Julia Sophia who was hunting me down on IRC and things like this with Rhodey Morales. Actually, I'm pretty sure she was Rhodey Morales. Rhodey was posing as a girl. On IRC before he befriended me. What is IRC? Uh, internet related chat okay. back in the 1994 95 when the internet was in its infant form, chat rooms were text based. I remember. Okay. Yeah, and so uh, telnet sessions, text based chats, and email were the big things, and then there was a simple browser, which I can't remember the name of it that came out, and then AOL came out, mm -hmm. which if you're my age, you'll remember, and they. I remember changed everything but okay um so um but remember this all starts this really gets bad for me in 94 with the internet um okay. and my brother wanting me to see it is that 29 no that's more like 23 okay. maybe 22 so before 23 24 i think okay yeah um okay so the police have to know, and because I'm ten times more known than Donald Trump, the police have to know. But if, even if that wasn't the case, mm -hmm. I mean, if if 40% of your lot in Thousand Oaks here is backwards, and to put things in perspective, I have video of um, every police station all across Southern California, even here in Thousand Oaks, mm -hmm. and the same patterns, mental illness patterns, are in their parking lots. So all the police and courthouses, the things directed at me are being done. So common sense. If you're a police officer or you work in the judicial system and the things are being done directed at me in your own parking lots, mm -hmm. how could you not know? Right. Okay, well, that's all on video. Well, <laughs> can I just say, ask one question? Sure. Just so, um, so what about the people that would say that that could happen in the where and that's like not proof and blood all that stuff? Well, know? see, that that's kind of what they do. See, you, you sort of have to understand how things start. Mm -hmm. Things start a certain way. For example, I park backwards, and then I'm sitting in an Encino Starbucks. Remember, I was going to do Encino Starbucks for about five years, mm -hmm. and every single day for every couple of minutes, I was provoked by one person sequentially after the next. And this is every every Starbucks, every every coffee bean, every restaurant, right. but trying to find peace at this location after seeing a therapist, Alex Lazar, who wanted to cover up 
what I knew. Um, literally thousands of people would show up per hour in the parking lot working on me. And um, so 90% of the cars are parked normal. I park my car backwards once. Then where I'm sitting, cars start to park backwards. So they all go from forward to backwards where I'm sitting. Okay. Now, after enough's enough, I start getting this on surveillance video and photos. Mm -hmm. Now they gotta cover up the crime. So how do you cover up a crime like that? You tell everyone to do it. Right. Now, okay. Kevin, if everyone does this, right. you're crazy because you're different and you think differently. Okay. But That's it didn't okay. start that way. I watched it all progress, not not just with the cars, with the whistling, with the tapping, with the you can't have a camera from my own father. Um, your dad said too. Uh, well, he'd play these games like um, you always have. Even though I didn't, once in a while I would take the camera to the office and I'll, on lunch go out and maybe yeah. test some new lenses and go out. And my father would get mad. Okay. And his way of dealing with some things is not communicate. Kevin, I really don't want you to have a camera when you come to the office. Okay, sure, Dad. Right. Fine. Done deal. Right. That's how normal human beings communicate. communicate. Mm -hmm. Instead, what he does is he'll say, Kevin, you always have the camera on you, even though that's not true. Trying to make it look like I have OCD and I'm crazy. Okay. And then this communication of his, or these accusations, magically go worldwide. That's the part that's not explained. Right. Magically worldwide. Okay? So now everyone's attacking you because you have a camera until you never have a camera again. Then you're walking in the store. Oh, so then I don't want to get too deep because I'll talk for hours. But okay. um, then I'll prove a point. I have the freedom to have a camera. So I'll have the camera on me more. Mm -hmm. And then I'll walk in the stores, random stores all over. You're a Pavarazzi and you can't have the camera. Just weird things that don't even make sense. Right. I saw that those people asked you that okay. in the parking lot. Well, I can't even remember. The, the one with I the pink so car, with the pink car at the Starbucks, and they were like fans of that lady. That oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's those mm -hmm. the the, the two-day setup video with the police. Yeah, mm -hmm. with Angeline that showed up here last a couple weeks ago, right. following me. Okay, so um, um, why does someone walk up to a guy with a camera and say, "Well, you're a paparazzi and you can't have a camera"? Well, first of all, nobody walks up to an actual paparazzi and tells them that. Right. But the reasoning is because strangers are now telling me you can't have a camera. And so the progression on that one, well, that one's complex, but I'm watching this progression. My father getting mad at me for having a camera and making up the lies that is an OCD-ish thing. Right. But then they also did it with my stepfather and the gym. Because I went to the gym four times a week, um, I have OCD and I can't stop going to the gym and it's not healthy for me to go to the gym for it. Whoa, oh, am I really, Which it's not directly said, but you're reading between the lines of people th thugging you, you can't go to the gym because you're crazy. And then maybe you'll go out to dinner with your stepfather and he'll mention, you know, you keep going to the gym and then you're connecting the dots. And it's like, I've never heard of someone being unhealthy. I've never heard of going to the gym being unhealthy for someone, no matter, yeah. even if you went seven days a week for five hours a day, mm -hmm. you're like extremely healthy. And some, to put things in perspective, some of the bodybuilders that actually do go to the gym yeah. seven days a week were basically thugging me that I go too much okay. for four days. So it's not about right. what they're making it look like, what it's about, right? It's right. It's, <laughs> and it's all, it's not direct. So I'm sure Correct. that was like incredible. People will say cryptic things like uh, you'll walk in and the person working at the front desk will say something like, you know, you don't have to be some super buff guy. Okay. And so, so you're putting the pieces buff. together, right? And, and then, then you're saying, well, why does the employee at the gym not want me to be buff at the gym, right? right? Even though it wasn't really about being Superman, but still, it doesn't matter if it was. Yeah. Um, that's the point, right? And so all these things are the same. It doesn't matter if I really was a Pavarazzi or. <laughs> but like putting all this together, it's like draining and exhausting. Yeah, and, and the thing is, it goes from thing to thing. So what's the reasoning? Right. If it goes from thing to thing, it's not really about the thing. Right. It's about something else. But this is to just drive you crazy until you have a mental breakdown, you have mm -hmm. to check into a mental institution. 
you get a really bad reaction and the police arrest you and lock you away or incarcerate you for life and remember it never ever stops all day and night 24 7 right. seven days a week hundreds of thousands of millions of people per day across the internet and worldwide parking lots and, and yeah. what's the reasoning right. I mean what do you think the reasoning is I mean like you said the psychological aspect of it you know like trying to well I mean it would make me feel crazy but there's got to be a reason. They're not doing oh, it for no reason. the actual reason? I yeah. Don't, I well, don't what do you think? I, I, I know that you don't know the actual reason, but right. what do you think based on your psychology degree? Is this something that sane, rational people do? Well, no. <laughs> okay, of course so... Not. Of course not. So, um. so then, if sane, rational people don't do it, then why would they do it? Well, they're not sane, you know? Okay, but... True, but they're, they're coordinating it. So if they're coordinating it, they have to have a logical reason, correct? Because yeah, one I mean, guy, one person can be crazy, and maybe you're walking down the street and he steps on a peanut shell and he flips out and <laughs> and puts a hatchet in your head, and that's crazy because he has no reasoning. Correct. But if there's a mass conspiracy, there has to be a reason because then you, you're saying that ha that three quarters of the planet are all crazy. Right. To have people following. But they're only crazy when it comes to Kevin Perlman, and then they switch back to normal with everyone else so it's not crazy because crazy I get what you're saying. yeah has randomness and no reasoning they all have reasons and they're interconnecting and they're communicating across the internet so they have reason they have moda motive and they have agenda mm -hmm. and they're conspiring in secret behind my back um, and with the police and government so like so what do you think I mean why this, would yeah what do you that way? what is it they want I mean, you said yourself, uh, I have well, it's like great self-control. What is it? You do. And so all this happening, it's like to make you look unstable and not... And like you said... Okay, and why would someone want... Why would someone want someone to look unstable? So you're not in society. Correct. And so like you were Eradication. Saying, yeah, incarceration for like, like you were mm -hmm. saying, or a mental hospital or whatever it may be. Which is just like okay. that's crazy. Correct. So like Hannibal Lecter crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, well it's unheard of. It's like like you were saying, but like the Holocaust and all those horrendous things did happen yeah. and that took you know Yeah. But, well believe it or not, I mean gang stalking is gang stalking is very rare. And all the noise of the people trying to sort of make it into a joke or become famous or hey, gang stalking happens every day. No, it doesn't. But it does happen. Trying to make it look illegitimate. Yeah, it does happen to the select few, but it's usually a small local area. It's not, I'm, I'm nowhere wide from this, but usually it's, hey, the police don't like something. Like, for example, I think it was Channel 4 News on my website has a person, they moved into their father's house, and one of the neighbors got jealous, and the neighbor, um, they wanted the house. And so they were friends with all the people in the fire department and community, oh, wow. and they have all the cars driving down the streets honking all day when they drive by the house. Oh, and this wow. is on Channel 4 News, right? Okay, so there's proof of... Yeah, and so the police and the fire department are working with the citizens, ganging up on this poor guy because he inherited his father's house. And right. someone just wanted it, right? Good grief. Yeah, so... But remember, that's in a town. Right. It's not worldwide like mine, right? So mine's just off the scale of you don't talk. Um, well, do you want, I mean, do you want to know, like, why? Like, do you, have you, I don't know if you've ever asked on your, ask How do you, people before, like, You can why ask them because this? they won't admit to it. Right, but, like, if this is, like, widespread, this interview, too, like, I don't know if, do you know what I mean? Like, so you ask the question, like, I want to know. Why? I would like to talk well, here's, to somebody. I mean, like I do want to know why. I definitely want to know why. But it has to be explained in such a way that it makes sense because some stupid accusation. Like, I get accusations all day or innuendos that I did this or that and they're in the thousands. Mm -hmm. But that's not why. Right. Why would have to be something like, listen, when you were five, uh, yeah. someone in this, this person in the psychology community who's linked up with this person in the Air Force and blah, blah, blah. It has to make sense, right? It would have to be very, like, <laughs> like the spider. Yeah, but what they do is people 
attack me and then they say, well, you must have done something, Kevin. Can you tell me what you've done? You know, like, and then you're like, like you know what no you one. did, right? Like what did your dad, you told me your He dad. said, um, my mom said my past caught up with me and hinted that I have to leave the country. And my father hint, said, I think you know what you did. And then when I specifically asked, he said, um, um, well, people aren't told what they did because they could lie. Showing he's a psychotic, like a psychotic murderer. Right. Right. But if you don't. And then he keeps telling me I'm not allowed to defend myself. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Right. And then they want me to go to therapists and tell them and confess. Or they want me to sign false confessions like John Paul Narano. Who is John Paul? Um, the security guard at Topanga oh. Ventura Starbucks. Okay. Not really working for Starbucks, but they manipulated him, him into attacking me. Um, right. Um, well, it's like, I mean... This is, it's just not, I don't know how I would feel if this was going on. You know, it's like a very lonely, like, scary place, I'm it's, sure. It's unheard of. There, there's conflict. nothing like this. There's, this is the largest crime in history known to man yeah. against one person ever in the history of humanity. And we're talking out of 7 billion people, there's a good 4 billion taking part all day and night, 24-7. If someone doesn't think that that isn't the crime of all crimes, yeah. in a slow, horrific, painful death or a way of incarcerating someone for life or locking them in a b little box or whatever. Like yeah, I mean, there is nothing that's ever been done like this, and yet none of these people are concerned about that. They don't s they'll see that there's a problem you're with this. suffering. That's like the point I want like, everyone to understand. Like, and then what suffering. they want to do is say, it doesn't matter if people are doing these things to you, you suffer from mental illness, so we need to put you in a mental institution. But that's irrelevant. The whole mental status, whatever, is irrelevant because a crime is a crime. You know Correct. That? And so that's like... Correct. If someone start, shows up and starts hacking your limbs off with a machete, the police don't go, well, you know, you suffer from bleeding to death and we have to put you in a special facility. What about the guy? He's falling around hacking. No, he doesn't matter. Well, right. that's the entire problem. Right. Like, <laughs> exactly. It doesn't matter. Like, the dog attack and all these other things that are like crimes, the vandalism, all these things, people trying to break into your home. It's like, who cares? Like, what, whatever they say, you're mentally insane, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't it's matter. That's not a crime, crime, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would, I'm sorry, I'm going on tangents, but, like, this is important, I feel like. What do you want to happen? Like, what would you like to happen? Like, what do you want this to... Okay, let me, because those are... I mean, we're at the end, yeah, and we well, we have like sorry, thirteen just, minutes, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm just we're just gonna crank. Point. We have barely any time left, so we're gonna crank through the last ones, and I'm gonna get to that question. Okay. Okay. So Mike Huntley hints to me that this is about controlling me. Have you ever seen someone try to control someone this way, or better yet, do you know anyone that walks around talking about control and controlling people? No. Quickly, not, uh, not fast like answers. That, no. Right? I mean, isn't it fair to say that... No. Um, let's say you're married to a guy, and he says, I want to control you. So every time um, you talk to your friend on the phone th that he doesn't like, he shoves a cattle prod up your ass. And it's not I a crime. Like, no. Because it's just about controlling you. Oh. Right? Yeah. It is a crime. That's the yeah, point. Lately. There's no such thing as controlling people because right. people are free to do what they want and if you don't like that you don't talk to them Walk the other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <absolutely. laughs> okay so that was okay yeah. so now um isn't the act of torture, torture a crime no matter what yes. the reason same Abs that's what we touched on a minute ago i feel like absolutely yeah torture is a crime yeah so dincy's neighborhood watch groups were following you around and thugging you and provoking you all day and night, 24-7, like the seven cars that showed up last night, waiting for me with lights on or off last night or whatever, and the people coming out over as I walk out saying, man to me over and over, or psychological torture tactics. So it's just because he wants to control someone and it's not a crime because he's controlling someone? Well, that violates my freedoms and constitutional rights protections and results in something really bad happening to me. Also known in law called damages, whether it's damages to me stopping from breathing, damages to stopping me from making money on a civil aspect, mm -hmm. or damages, whatever, but damages. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we don't have much time, but I haven't anything else you want to talk about. 
Um, I guess like the question that I asked you because you know obviously okay. like the physical harm that has been done to you and like the yeah. vandalism and all that stuff that's easier those are like hard evidence facts like the psychological stuff yeah. that's being done and has been going on for so long it's harder to like concretely you know whatever yeah. and like easier to deny but the what do you know what I'm trying to say here like the facts like they vandalize a car like that's a crime like they you got okay so yeah I understand. by a dog okay you so have all this video of all these other things it's just yeah okay so no i can answer this because i think okay and i have your i have some of Brittany's questions from the end of last week which oh, okay. we ran out of time written down here um what okay oh <laughs> <laughs> okay well first what am i hoping to get from the interview yeah. um or, or i think not only do i need to be acknowledged based on the facts proof evidence the horrific, unspeakable, unimaginable situation that everyone's trying to cover up. Um, I think it is important that people like Brittany that see it, which is the select few that has the balls to say, um, this is not right. This is unacceptable. Okay? And she has a psychology degree, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's important, even though it doesn't, no offense to you, okay. it, it takes a 10 year old with common sense to understand what's going on but because Brittany has a psychology degree she could understand the psychotic personalities of control or whatever you know my father who knows what happened to my father for him to be like this and who knows what happened to me to my mother for her to be this crazy neurotic um, I'm digging for anything to try to fix you to death or whatever right I mean well and the emotional like torment that you constantly endure day to day like, yeah I want people to like understand that yeah. and then like what can be done so you don't yeah. have to suffer in that way yeah and so so why does my website exist that was one of your questions I think well, yeah, well, that's a good uh, question yeah. but okay <laughs> why and this was a big one because people are trying to cover this up but yeah you wrote that on the paper as we um the website exists on multiple levels, the first and foremost is to put a stop to this mass attacks to me so that I can stay breathing, have a healthy life. I'm 47, 47 years have been stolen from me. It would be nice to know that even though I could probably never really have a normal life, that at least I can have a life without angry, enraged psychopaths running around saying, you don't talk or we kill you and this and that with worldwide groups helping them and the police and government. Okay, so first and forma, foremost is to normalize the situation like we spoke about mm -hmm. so people understand what's really going on. The truth, what's really going on, um, whether people think I did something or not, that's their own baggage. And that's not my problem. And if someone wants to actually have a real crime of a magnitude that matters, other than tapping your foot, yeah. for example, LAPD and Rodney Morales say I killed someone, but is there a body? Is there a crime scene? No, there isn't. And as this jumps to thousands of things, other things, if there's no body and there's no crime scene, then there's no crime. person killed, and therefore there's no argument. And and just to state it, <laughs> you've never killed anybody. Correct. Like the facts are like Not even remotely close. No. And if they're going to say that um, I was driving and I farted and the fart smell uh, varied from my car to someone else and they smelled it and it caused an accident, well, that doesn't quite count, just like the foot tapping. No, <laughs> no you're not a violent person. You would yeah. never cause harm to somebody <laughs> intentionally like that. Yeah, and so the point is, I can't control... A bunch of witch hunters paranoia mm -hmm. but that doesn't give them the right to hunt me down and kill me no. right and that is unacceptable and that is the entire police's job to stop that and make sure that doesn't happen okay so the second reason is awareness that you are not safe you are not protected you are not safe you do not have constitutional protections freedoms like we were all promised in the United States of America and even though we are all ingrained and reinforced to talk about this is the best country in the world which might have been in the 1950s or 40s or 20s um, we are no longer the leader of freedom or capitalism we are at the bottom 
and we have lots of nut jobs in our broken government with like NSA running around with their government paranoia with control issues. But back to my point, no one is safe. And if this is going to happen to someone like me, it's definitely going to happen to a lot of other people's and, and it's going to get a lot worse with technology and things like deep learning coming around, which you can bet that organizations like the NSA are already using for all sorts of profiling algorithms and things like this. Um, and I'm not getting into the technical aspect. You can research on that on your own. And most importantly, because this is the largest crime known to man against one person of unfathomable things done to him, people need to understand for historical sake what has happened, what did occur, what is still going on, so that it never happens again, just like we do with things like the Civil War and um, um, the 1940s, World War II, or whatever, so that people can understand and learn from what's going on. But more importantly, checks and balances within our government, it is up to you, the people. The government, they don't care. They want to own you. They want to control you. They want um, Patriot Acts and FISA Acts to bypass constitutional rights and protections. But it is up to you, the people, to stand up against this tyranny and put a stop to it because they don't care. And if nobody speaks out, it's just going to get worse and worse. Um, and what do I want to happen? Um, well several things. I feel that people do need to be held accountable mm -hmm. uh, for damages. Um, Just to acknowledge. To acknowledge the situation. To speak the truth about the situation. Instead of running around saying you don't talk or we kill you and the truth can't come out because of this or that. Well it's too late. The truth is out. And people are going to have to park their cars backwards for the rest of their life or until I'm dead. And that says that that's more important to these people than simply saying this is wrong and it should never happen again and that's weird to me but the truth of the matter is I don't care if right now you're parking your car backwards to get at me because you're angry about some lie that you've been told your kid this could be done to your kid just like it was done to me for no reason at all and then what are you gonna say right all of a sudden, you thought you were the good guy because Dins the Dinsey crew, the 40-year Dinsey crew and Mike Huntley crew said, help us hunt down and kill or eradicate Kevin Perlman. And then they turn and they take your kid and they do it to your kid because you know what? They don't care about you. They do not care about you. They are using you as tools to get at me. And I guarantee that they will throw you under the bus while they sit back and eat donuts because they don't care. Um, and while you, while you might feel important because you're taking part in what they want you to take part in, trust me, it's not making you important. It's making you look really bad. <laughs> right? And history is going to judge that. I might be dead and gone, but history is going to judge that. What happened here? No matter if this makes the history books or not, history is going to judge it. I want to say just one thing. Okay, go ahead. If that's okay. I want people to know you, like the person you are. I think that's important. It's I very think important. I was robbed of that starting at five years you're old. You're a good person. You are. And you are very smart. You're creative. You're driven. You've done all these incredible things throughout your life. Thank even you. though you're very modest <laughs> <laughs> about them. But you are. Like, you're a good person. Like, you're caring. You're always very kind. You're always very, you know, giving. Like, you're, you've never done a mean thing. Like, I've never witnessed you be mean to anybody. You're well, I'm human. Civil. Right, but I've never witnessed that. Like, you know, to me, you've always been very respectful. You've always been very kind. You know, yeah, you're a good person, and so I don't. I want people to know yeah. that. About well, I'll you. say this because I don't want some. Uh, thank you. That's very kind, oh, that's and so I think true. it's fairly accurate. But I, I, I don't want some facade because no, I just want to say I want to. <laughs> I want to say I am human, yeah. and I have been an asshole from time to time. Who hasn't? <laughs> and most of those times were from people that were assholes to me. But we all have our moments. But the point is that that human beings vary in emotions. Totally, totally. And right. it's not because you tapped your foot around someone that didn't like foot tapping or thinks um. even if I did be an asshole ish person to Aubrey Fisher and tap my foot to provoke her, 
that wouldn't define my entire existence. That's the point. Exactly. Exactly. And so that is. That's what I want. So people can understand the how smear smear campaigns work and defamation, slander, propaganda. They leave out all the good things. One human (laughs) error or mistake or whatever doesn't define this person. Like you, you know what I mean. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody messes up. Like you're human, but you're a good person. Like at your core. Yeah, I I think so. Thank you. Everything (laughs) I've seen points to that. You know, so I'm. I just want people to know you. Yeah. Like. Well, I think I think that that's what it's supposed to be about. Is that um, and that's the point. Is that most okay? If you if you date a guy. And the guy hates your guts. Mm-hmm. And you break up. Mm-hmm. And then you go and you meet some new friend, or you meet someone else. And, so, and then, okay, we get along because he got to know you. Right. But that's not how my life works. What, my, what happens to me is I date a girl. We go out to dinner once. She thinks I farted during dinner. She runs out and somehow the entire planet, just like Mike Huntley was saying, with the... Um, the crocodile Dundee, I tell Wally and he tells the town, whatever, with his little cryptic, mm-hmm. we're collecting information to use against you to give to the world uh, with the government. Um, so Kevin, Ke- I fart during dinner, she gets offended, Kevin ruined my life, and he's a troll, whatever a troll is, something out of Lord of the Rings, I don't know. And um, Kevin trolled me, and now there's a worldwide campaign to kill me because I simply went on a date and it didn't work out. Right? You want people to get so to that's know not, you. You want to be given the opportunity. Yeah, that's not how it works. I'm not saying that everyone has to mess with me, but what I'm saying is I should have the right... The fair chance. Like everyone else, look, yeah. I went out with you, it didn't work out. I went out with you, it didn't work out. I went out with, And that's how it normally works. You keep meeting people until you meet one that you mess with, and usually the information isn't collected and disseminated from each and every one to use against you in some kind of global stocking network system built by the government to right. eradicate you, right? You want like a blank slate, no judgment, like no yeah. judgment or whatever. Well, there's you always a level you. of judgment, but well, it's yeah, not but judgment, not it's the action. Correct. You just, right? I mean... Everyone's going to judge. Well, everyone judge. yes, but not, you know they what don't, I mean? They don't like act on, on it, right? Based on these things that are not true. Like, I want people to like, like for a second, kind of put all that Genocide, yeah. sorry, and like get to know you and talk to yeah, you. Yeah, well, I think like, I think most people they when they meet someone at first, there's some kind of wall. Of course. But they're they're willing to sort of take the time, and it's not a personal wall; it's just a human safety wall. Yeah. And they take the time to let you in and know yes. more. And if they start seeing I don't like this person, they back off, like I do. But once they start to get to know them a little yeah. bit, like I want you to have the opportunity for people to start to get to know you a little bit. Yeah, of, you know. Yeah, and my problem is that I can't get to know anyone because they've been given this laundry list of lies, literally in the thousands. Um, I'm in a yeah. kitty born, I'm a pedophile. I'm a car thief. I'm a rapist. I'm, according to Sean Dinsey, um, oh, I hate black people. I hate Persians. I hate Asians. According to Sean Dinsey, I'm true. the next Vegas shooter, Unabomber. And this information, these are in the thousands, this information is being disseminated across the entire planet, literally, so that any person I have contact with because you need to die and we need to lock you away. And by the way, I don't know you. Hence, back to the reason the website exists. Mm-hmm. With that being said, if every person I meet has a preconceived notion that I've didn't committed a thousand crimes, right. then they need the opposing argument. Right? right? Absolutely. <laughs> so that's what, I, yeah, that's yeah. what I was trying to say. Yeah. So. There's two sides to every story, and I used to joke around. There's three sides to every story. Mine, this side, that side, and the <laughs> truth. Yeah. But um, there's two sides to every story, and at no point should there be a one-sided government propaganda against me since five years old to the entire planet. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, anything else you want to? Not off the top of my head. I just want people to get to know you, and like, yeah. cause But I think I think in order notion. for people to want to get to know me, they need to acknowledge the situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, acknowledge None of it's true. And that the government and the people that I grew up with have something to hide and they're spewing lie after lie to the entire planet to try to cover it up 
And most people should have enough common sense to understand that some guy's walking around the planet and each person he meets is spewing lies across the entire planet, then something strange is going on if people are walking up, contacting him. Hey, don't talk to Kevin because he's this or that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and it happens on a city to city or state to state or uh, at this point country to country level if you're watching if someone's setting up some kind of news feed about Kevin Perlman you should instantly not be mad at Kevin Perlman you should be mad at the guy setting up the news feed <laughs> right? yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah that's and that's the what's the word I'm like the awe of this I can't believe that these people it's like the movie Idiocracy where I can't believe I'm watching this going I know even guy? though Tom Farley's lie is that I'm, I've said that people all people are stupid or something like this mm -hmm. um, to try to rile the people against me um, it's kind of like the movie Idiocracy where they're all just like dumbed down in the future like, uh, well, we water our plants with late Gatorade because it gives it electrolytes and you're like <laughs> is this really happening you know <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but I can't think of anything else. Okay. So, uh, okay. I guess we will end this here. And, um... To that be is continued. It, to be continued, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>